The Fan. WIBC HD2 W298BB. WIBC HD3 W228CX. Indianapolis. It's Kevin and Query. I throw, you catch. It's not that hard, okay? All right, get the out of here. I'm going to talk a lot about drills and fundamentals. Watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it. On 93.5. Watch it. And 107.5. Oh, baby. The Fan. So we start the morning the way that we do each and every morning. For those of you that are not familiar with the behind the scenes of the program, I found lens wipes for my glasses, and I brought in 12 pair of glasses. I'm cleaning them all while we're on the air this morning. And Kevin, Mark, and I were talking about the excitement of women's basketball last night because there were some good games. I flipped on UConn NC State double OT. Better than flipping them off, I suppose. Well, sure. Why is UConn getting a home game as a two seed? That was a big topic of discussion amongst a lot of people, notably those from the Raleigh-Durham, North Carolina area. Yeah, bless you, Mark. Um, Good Tuesday morning. Thanks for everybody tuning in to Kevin and Quarry. I mean, I get, like, you know, tickets. You probably just want to sell out the arenas. You don't care too much about that side of it. but It does seem like um, there have been a lot of game placements in this year's men's and women's tournament where the committee kind of overlooks some things, right? Well, in the women's tournament, right, don't you play your first two round games like on your home floor? We saw that with Indiana. If you're one of the top four seats. I think that's right. Um, But yeah, the women's final four will be three one seeds and then the Cinderella story of UConn. Yeah. As the two seed. 14 straight. I'll tell you what, can can you say, Kevin, that Gino Ariema, there are others that are in the discussion. But if you were in debate class in high school and were assigned to debate it about Gino Ariema, could you say that he is the greatest team coach in women's sports history? Or, excuse me, in college sports history, men or women? I'm a little nervous because that thought actually crossed my mind last night, and the fact that we are thinking alike really makes me... I looked up his record last night. Uneasy. Yeah, I was curious how he got started there. I didn't realize he was an assistant at Virginia and then went to UConn. Jake, is he the greatest coach, period? That's what I mean. I mean, like, 17. Period. Like, throw out sex, throw out team sport. I mean, throw out college. Right. 14 straight Final Fours, 11 national championships. I get it. Parody is probably not something we uh, associate women's basketball but parody, with at though, the college level. But, but the but lack still. of parody is because of the dominance he created within his own program. Right? Well, also, it's not like Tennessee's maintained it. Now, granted, you know, they've obviously, unfortunately, had to change coaches, but... Um, Even the the programs that have sustained it to some degree, Notre Dame has had a run as well, South Carolina, Stanford. um, Yeah, it's absolutely incredible. I mean, he's won 88% of his games. Almost 89% of his games. 14 straight Final Fours is just incredible. It is. Absolutely incredible. So, yeah, the Final Four for the women, uh, that'll be Sunday and Tuesday in Minneapolis, and the men Saturday and Monday down in New Orleans. Um, we're going to have Jacob you... Tammy on the show today at 8.30, former Colts wideout, or excuse me, former Colts tight end, uh, but most importantly for this conversation, a former teammate of Matt Ryan. And so really looking forward to talk with him. And then Michael Lewis, the new head basketball coach of the Ball State Cardinals, he will be with us at 9 o'clock. Have you been to a Final Four? Uh, just the ones here. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mark? Nope. No. No. You know, I remember, man, Final Four weekend to me was always was growing up. It was this was always the weekend of spring break. The Final Four weekend, the, the opening, the spring breaks when I was a kid, and I think this is true of a lot of people in Indianapolis. Spring break weekend began on the weekend of the Final Four. So the Monday of the National Championship game was always the first Monday wherever we were. I now feel like it's earlier. I feel like spring breaks are earlier I think that may be right. I recall in 1981, we were going to, I presume, Florida as a family, and we stopped on the drive down on Saturday. You're really getting after these glasses. I know. Well, it's very important to clean all these. And my dad got a hotel room for us just to watch the Indiana LSU game. <laughs> and then we got I back in the car and kept driving to to wherever we were going. I love that. Um, I mean, it was a, you know, 
I remember watching Georgia Tech and Arkansas in 1990 in Matt Jacklin's grandparents' condo when we got down to Florida. I mean, it was – I just loved the Final Four. absolutely loved it. And the first time that I had a chance to go to a Final Four was in 91. The Final Four was here in Indy, my senior year of high school, and we were leaving to go to spring break. So here the Final Four was finally coming to Indianapolis, and I was leaving town. Got to plan around that. I know. It was not well planned. I was planning on going in 93 when I thought for sure Indiana was going to go. They got upset by Kansas. Where was that Final Four? That was in New Orleans. That was uh, all number ones except for Indiana. That was the year that Allen Henderson got hurt. Indiana probably, nothing against Allen, but I think everybody knows that Indiana was the best team in the country for sure. Um, But in 97 it was here. 2000 it was here. 2006 it was here. So I was fortunate to cover those. But then I also went to... Oh, gosh, I've been to Minneapolis in 92 when uh, Ty Leary went crazy and hit nine three or three threes late in that game. I've just I, I've loved the Final Four. I, I love everything about it. I've been to New Orleans a couple times for it, Atlanta, San Antonio. Love it. Now, I you're a little so anti fun. this Final Four, though. I Just give me good games, Jake. It's still the Final Four. I agree with you. I just – the thing that I love about the tournament, Kevin, is the randomness of it. I love the fact that in January, I could walk into a restaurant and look up, and if Iowa State is playing Baylor, I'm like, eh, okay, whatever. But in March, it's different. And so I like to see matchups I've never seen before. You know, and I realize that the further you get in the tournament and the Blue Bloods get further, you know, you're going to see right. Kansas has played Kentucky before, where, but to see two teams that are playing each other for the third time this year is just kind of like, eh, okay. Maybe even the fourth time this year. I think it's the third time. Yeah, they did not play in the ACC tournament, Duke and Carolina. It's not like Duke and Carolina, though, were on some collision course all year long. You know, I think both of them that's fair. In, in very different ways have gotten to these paths. Um, and I, again, am a sucker for the storyline. You know, it's why I see Tom Brady coming back and playing. I'm like, good. You know, keep on trying to achieve this incredible run of greatness. It's probably why last night at whatever, 1030, I'm looking up Gino Oriema and his... You know, career history. Uh, it is. It was amazing when I looked it up. Hey, oh my gosh, it is absolutely absurd looking up all of that. So again, Kansas Villanova six oh nine on Saturday from the Superdome, and then eight forty nine it will be uh, Duke and Carolina. Uh, Jake, all of a sudden, you know, we do this tankathon on a daily basis for the Indiana Pacers, and I'm starting to get a little nervous about this Cleveland Cavaliers pick. I haven't seen what the Cavaliers have been doing. The Cavaliers have been doing what I think we're used to the Cavaliers doing, um, and that would be losing. Uh, All of a sudden, they are the seventh team in the Eastern Conference. And, of course, with the play-in format that you now have, the seven seed plays the eight seed. The winner of that gets the seven seed. The nine seed plays the ten seed. The winner of that plays the loser of seven and eight. We remember this last year from the Pacers. And then the winner of that game is the eight seed. Uh, Remember, the Cavs pick is lottery protected, and right now they are a half game out of the five and six spot. I think it's Chicago and Toronto. Correct. Just above them with uh, six or seven games to go here. I don't, (laughs) if I'm a Pacers fan, I don't want to mess around with Cleveland having to win one of those two games. They would get two cracks at it. Well, hold on. But the lottery, in order to get into the lottery, you have to be a non-playoff team, right? Correct. So if it's lottery protected, in other words, the only way that Cleveland has to surrender that pick over to the Pacers is if they fail to make the playoffs, right? No, they only give up that pick if they make the playoffs. That's what I mean. I'm sorry. So if they're one to eight seed, then that is pick it not is going one to ten. No, technically nine or ten. I don't believe is making the playoffs. The the nine and ten do make the playoffs, don't they? Because they play in that weird playoff. Is that considered? No, I don't think it is. I think that's that's participation okay. banner type stuff. I, I would hope not. So right now, though, the Cavaliers are three and a half games clear of the nine seed. Right, but they would be in the play-in format. The big thing, you want them to be the six. You don't want to mess around because... Well, I get it, it but what it, I'm saying isn't is... Isn't Brooklyn one of the teams in the play-in? I mean, do you want Cleveland against Brooklyn for a one-game playoff to go to the saying, postseason? We should have probably. I believe, Kevin, that the one through eight, you're not in a play-in scenario. 
Seven, eight, nine, ten is the plan. Okay. So then, last year the Pacers played the Hornets. The Pacers beat the Hornets in the first game. Right. They, they were nine ten. Hornets out. I, Pacers I think, then played the Wizards. Wizards beat the Pacers. The Wizards got the eight seed, and the Pacers season ended without making the playoffs. So last year, we're going to look and see if if the Hornets were considered in part of the lottery, right? Well, the Pacers were. They had Chris Duarte as their as their lottery pick, thirteenth, and they and they were the nine. Is that considered part of the lottery? Yeah, the lottery's one to fourteen. Okay. So but that is the concern right now. You've got Cleveland at seven, Brooklyn eight, Charlotte nine, Atlanta ten. So Cleveland will play Brooklyn. If the season ended today, the winner of that would be the seven seed. And then the loser of that game would play the winner of Charlotte Atlanta for the eighth and final spot. Can you imagine the the luck of the Pacers if that's exactly what happened? And it fell that way where they where Cleveland fell out of after everything, Cleveland falls. Right. Now in, in an ideal world, Jake, you would flirt with this play in uneasiness if you're a Pacers fan, and Cleveland would lose the first game, win the second game, be the eight seed, lose in the first round, so then you'd get the highest pick possible outside of the lottery. Yeah, but I mean But that's just not a game that I think you you, you want to play. And I don't have the rules in front of me, Jake, but I'm pretty sure if you miss out on their pick, aka if Cleveland does fall into the lottery, it like transfers to like two second round picks down the road. I um I really, really want that second pick because I think that's where you're going to get a really good player. I mean, it goes without saying that the Pacers are going to get a good player with their own pick, a top five, top six. But that 19th pick right now is it's slotted. I mean, if like a, I'm telling you, if Mark Williams of Duke is around, you got to go with it. Well, also you have some flexibility because you had that Houston pick early in the second round. So if you're sitting there right, at right. 19... You have three of the top 31. Right. So if you're sitting there at 19 and all of a sudden Mark Williams is there at 16 and you don't think he's going to get to you, you can trade 31, you know, get up three spots, right. and then go ahead and select him. 51 losses now in the year for the Indiana Pacers as they lose last night to the Hawks, 132-123. That is the most since I exited the womb. In 1989. By the way, it's is it me or is it warm in here? No, I asked you that when you came in. I was asking if you were toasty, and you said, I'm fine. And then you busted out your full case of glasses. <laughs> Grandpa Query. Is, is it the cleaning of the glasses that has gotten me so warm in here? It's, it's probably the chemicals from that spray. <laughs> all, of, all of a sudden, I'm burning up. i got to take off my sweatshirt. Go ahead, Kevin. Talk. i got to take my sweatshirt off. People watching, people are going to see me disrobe. You know, I, I haven't showed you guys the train tracks on my back. No. Nope. Do you want to see that? No. I, I guess we'll have no I choice. Need, well, Is that from our listeners? The <laughs> train tracks on your back? I'm a little nervous. No, here. I had to have a, uh, I don't know, I, when when I got health insurance, I, I went to the dermatologist, Rob Huff, who I grew up with. He's two years older than me, but he's a fabulous dermatologist. So I went through the rotations, and I he said, he's like, now, are, are you there concerns for your epidermis? I said, no, I just have health insurance for the first time, so I'm going to everything. You know what I mean? So they looked at it, and he said, well, you do have one like mole here that could be of concern. It was not cancerous. I'm not making light of that. But they wanted to be preemptive and have it removed. And, and everybody always told me, have you guys ever had this done where they, like, freeze it off, and then it's off? Yeah. I feel right. like I had a wart back in the day. That so, that. yeah, I thought, you know, everybody said, well, it's just no big deal. So I went in, and I said, yeah, I, this is right before the St. Pete race. And he goes, no, 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 you, you need like three weeks recovery after this. And I said, I thought you're just, you just get out with like a razor and freeze it and, and then I'm walk away. He said, no, 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 I, I got to dig this thing out. So I had to wait until I had a two-week window because this apparently... Is vivid imagery on yeah, a Tuesday my, morning. My here. back was going to look like Frankenstein. And so now I've got... And, and then they told me that I needed to keep it moist with gel. Oh and I thought that's something you guys could do. It'd be a fun project on the show. Oh, boy. Uh, sign me up. Like yeah. <laughs> yeah. bonding experience. HR is just one floor <laughs> above. And do you guys want to see the scar? Uh, I'm, Should I... I could show it on the... Can I show it on the YouTube? I, I don't... Bl I believe that's NSFW, not safe for work. <laughs> okay. If I'm applying gel to anyone, I'm starting to ask for more i'm asking for a raise <laughs> well that's that Hold would on. be one way to I gotta put take it. my yeah. sweatshirt off i'm burning up up here again the pacers lose last night 132 123 six games to go now 
in the regular season. They've given up 133, 131, 132. Oh, my God. The final three games. That's Jake Query rocking a St. Mary's College t-shirt. God, those were some train tracks. Multiple colors on those train tracks. Oh, were you able to see it? Oh, yeah. How bad was it? I can't see it, see? They, uh, it, it didn't look pretty. They they asked me. They said, now, in the morning around 7.30 or so, do you have anybody that can apply ointment? I said, well, yeah, There's I no way that they've said that. co-host, yes. <laughs> you, no, I've got the sheet at home. I'll show you. It's a doctor's note. Uh, the Miles Turner news, Jake. Uh, no surprise there. Officially shut down for the season. What are you doing with him in the offseason? Hold on to him. You, uh, are you worried at all about... What, 35 games he missed to end last season with a toe injury and now 40 games to end this season that he has missed due to a stress reaction? We're talking about a big fella that has now missed half of the last two seasons due to feet ailments. Do you believe if the Pacers right now were 51 and 22 that Miles Turner's out? No, I, I I would assume he's playing, but right. again, a stress reaction for a seven footer that it. we had questions about him. I think I get it. gate was the word of choice a lot of the pundits used when he left Texas. Uh, Jake, I, I think we can sit here and say this: the Pacers' defense is absolutely horrific without Miles Turner. Correct. I mean, god awful. I just Correct. rattled off the final three game, the last three games: one thirty three, one thirty one, one thirty two. But I'm also sitting here being like. Gosh, he's going into a contract year, and he's missed 80 games the last two years. And again, it's the type of injury. This is not a I, shoulder I injury. That. This is not a hand injury. We're talking about feet for big dudes. And as much as your mole just scarred me for the rest of the day, <laughs> that is worrisome. Listen, I, I talked about this yesterday with JMV. Thank you to JMV for having both of us on throughout different periods of the week. Um, if you look at the Pacers roster... Chris Duarte is a really good player. He's not a really good player that should be a top one or two player on a team because that team's not going to win 50. If Chris Duarte is your one, two, or three option, you ain't winning 55 games. But really nice, like six-man level player. Isaiah Jackson, I think, has a load of potential and is a really good piece. Jalen Smith, if you can retain him, big question mark. A lot of potential can be a really good piece for you. Whether it be Paolo Banchero or Jabari Smith or Jaden Ivey, really nice piece. You're going to have probably one of those or a like thereof. Chet. Keegan, Keegan Murray. Yeah, Chet Holmgren I'd stay away from personally, but you get what I'm saying. Mark Williams of Duke or a player like that if you have that 19th pick. And then you throw in off of the bench – Probably O'Shea Brissett. Maybe Dwayne Washington has played his way into getting some belief there. And Miles Turner as a starter. Kevin, you've got the pieces right there of a team that could really make some noise in two years. I'm not saying they're the Phoenix Suns and they rise from the ashes and suddenly are playing in the finals, but that's what Phoenix did. Phoenix had one or two veteran players and then loaded up on picks and made a few savvy moves, and boom. They were young, and they were fast, and they were furious. And the Pacers, are they have the potential to do that. I'm not saying they do. not saying it falls that way. But in my opinion, Miles Turner would fit into that plan. You know, without Turner, Jake, I have no great answer for you. It's not like there's this ready-made... It's not like Goga is going to protect the rim at a high right. level. I mean, tomorrow. Mark Williams might. Yeah, yeah. So that would be my biggest pushback against it. But I feel like entering this offseason, whether it's Turner, whether it's Malcolm Brogdon and his injury history, again, continuing to be there, Buddy healed in a much different way. You've got some big decisions that I agree. The Pacers are in a really nice position to be able to greatly reshape the look and makeup of their team. But they also have a couple internal like veteran guys. Again, Brogdon, Turner, uh, Heald. You know, TJ Warren's a free agent, so you can't throw him in there. But that will be some big decision making 
for the I, Pacers. I forgot Halliburton, by the way. In discussing this my awesome. scenario, obviously Halliburton's your centerpiece. Right? Yes, without question. And Buddy Heald, probably a rotational guy as well. you got to add to that moving forward. Uh, we saw a transfer from Purdue yesterday. A little bit surprising, I think, to some. Um, they do have an opening that, um, even I, if this player would have returned, I think still needed attention to transfer portal this offseason. We'll talk about that as well. Again, Jacob Tammy, former Colts tight end. Teammate of Matt Ryan's. He's going to join us at 8.30. Michael Lewis at 9 o'clock. I want to get into several interesting um, comments, tidbits we heard from the league owners meetings down there for the NFL in Palm Beach. Um, I thought there were a couple of things that made me uh, pause a little bit from what we heard from Frank Wright and Chris Ballard yesterday down there. So we'll touch on that as well. Thankfully, Jake Shirt is back on, That's right. and uh, the show is somehow back on the train tracks here. I should have on showed the Tuesday train tracks before Purdue played. Morning, 93.5, 107.5. Yeah, that would have been the difference. 93.5, 107.5. Symbolic. The fan. The Ride with JMV. Honestly, I think we were all skeptical about how the Colts were going to get out of this quarterback situation. Also, Chris Ballard is just cleaning up a mess that the Colts made. This is what happened when the owner wants only one year from Carson Wentz. But I will say this. They made the best out of what was a messy situation. They think they can win the AFC South with Matt Ryan. We'll see. The Ride with JMV. Weekdays, 3 to 6. On 93.5 and 107.5. The Fan. Mucinex DM's bilayer tablet allows for immediate and extended release, relieving both wet and dry coughs and loosening chest congestion for 12 long hours. Grab Mucinex DM, available at Walgreens. Big O Tires is locally owned and operated with the lowest price on every tire every day, plus online appointment scheduling and financing made easy. Big O Tires, the team you trust. There's never been a better time for a cash-out refinance. Apply online today at the Home Loan Expert. Dot com. NMLS number 1326-241. Hey, it's JMV. Race Trash Service is the largest independent recycling and waste solutions provider in the Indianapolis area, and right now, they're looking for great people to join the team. Rays is a family-operated business and has been providing Central Indiana with industry-leading recycling and waste disposal solutions since 1965. They focus a lot on the culture to make it a great place to work. Go to racetrash.com to see the career opportunities waiting for you. That's racetrash.com to Today, Ray's, your recycling and waste solutions partner. A while back, we at AmericanEagle.com were asked to build the e-commerce site of a major candy distributor. With the need for a website that could take into account everything from shipping times to local weather, because, you know, candy melts, the task was not like taking candy from a baby. Fortunately, we live for a good digital challenge and free bonbons. So we got to work on a slew of complex integrations, including a shipping algorithm that factored in variables like distance, speed, and location. The website even let the end customer personalize their candy for special events, like weddings or, you know, major website launches. (laughs) When all was said and done, our client enjoyed a significant increase in traffic, which we were also well prepared for, and an increase in average order size. A sweet result indeed. For complex e-commerce sites, digital marketing, UX, and more, talk to the experts at AmericanEagle.com. Don't just grow, soar. At Uline, they know going the extra mile takes hard work. For companies pushing to go further, Uline will go the distance with you. 24-7, they answer the phone to get you the shipping and industrial supplies you need. Business can move fast. Unexpected large orders, adverse weather new safety guidelines, and changing economic trends. Uline works hard keeping 38,000 items ready to ship, minimizing detours on your way to the extra mile. Visit Uline.com. Indy, finally springtime, and if you hate to paint, do what your neighbor Edwina did. She called Rhino Shield. Over the years, I've had to touch up the house. I just got to the point where I couldn't spend any more money on the outside of the house, and when I saw Rhino Shield, I thought that was the answer to my problem. Rhino Shield's not paint. It's better. I've had painters here before, and it was usually quite a disaster with them leaving their equipment here and, and picking up things in the yard, but Rhino Shield was right on it. Indy, now get the guarantee Guaranteed protection of Rhino Shield for 15% off the regular price. The gentleman said, if if you're interested, give me a call. And I said, honestly, can you come tomorrow? <laughs> Here's Rhino Shield Shane Smith. This offer is limited, so call me at 888-RHINO-41. That's 888-RHINO-41. Don't paint. Don't vinyl. Go, Go Rhino. Rhino. 
don't find no go ride no shield never paint your house again ride no shield turn it up so. Greg Hubler Chevrolet proudly presents Trace Adkins with special guests Lone Star Diamond Rio Big Country and Rose O'Neill Saturday June 18th at the Morgan County Fairgrounds in Martinsville Trace Adkins Save 25% off all tickets April 2nd, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Only at Craig Hubler Chevrolet in Canby. Trace Adkins, Saturday, June 18th at the Morgan County Fairgrounds. More info at HankFM.com. BetMGM welcomes you with a special offer on the NBA. Simply place a $10 Moneyline wager on any game. If either team hits a three-pointer, you'll win $200 in free bets. Just use the bonus code THEFAN200. That's all one word, capital T, capital F. When you make your first bet. Plus, you'll earn BetMGM rewards points that can be redeemed for online bonuses or converted into comps for rooms, restaurants, and more at over 20 MGM resorts nationwide. BetMGM is proud to be an authorized gaming partner of the NBA. Download the app or go to BetMGM.com and use that bonus code THEFAN200 to win $200 in free bets on your first NBA wager. Visit BetMGM.com for terms and conditions. 21 years of age or older to wager. Indiana only. New customer offer. All promotions are subject to qualification and eligibility requirements. Rewards issued as non withdrawable free bets or site credit. Free bets expire seven days from issuance. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem and wants help, call 1 800 9 with it. Finding great candidates to hire can be like, well, trying to find a needle in a haystack. Sure, you can post your job to some job board, but then all you can do is hope the right person comes along, which is why you should try ZipRecruiter for free at ziprecruiter.com slash hire. ZipRecruiter doesn't depend on candidates finding you. It finds them for you. Its powerful technology identifies people with the right experience and actively invites them to apply to your job. You get qualified candidates fast. So while other companies might deliver a lot of hay, ZipRecruiter finds you what you're looking for. The needle in the haystack. See why four out of five employers who post a job in ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. And now you can try ZipRecruiter for free. That's right, free at ZipRecruiter.com slash hire. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash hire. ZipRecruiter.com slash hire. The Sports Center update on 93.5 and 107.5. The fan is presented by Big O Tires, the team you trust. So you heard Kevin talking about it, the Pacers situation in terms of the playoffs <laughs> of other teams, I should say, right? Yeah, and got the, a the draft the lottery, time. yeah. Cleveland's the team you want to look out for, but last night the Pacers did what was, at this point, the goal. Stayed interesting, had a good game out of Tyrese Halliburton, but lost 132-123 to Atlanta at Gamebridge Fieldhouse. Back at the Fieldhouse, Denver comes calling on Wednesday, that is a 7 o'clock tip. The Hawks are they whopping 44 in the first quarter last night. Halliburton did have 25 and 13. Buddy Heald with 26. But defense, once again, the issue for the Pacers there. And as Jake said, Denver on Wednesday at Boston Friday. Home to the Pistons on Sunday. The most losses in 32 years for the Pacers. Well, that Pistons Pacers tilt will be a big one, huh? Yeah, that'll be I think you and Mottman will be the only two people in the entire Midwest <laughs> that will have intrigue into that one. I think he's checked out. <laughs> and moving over to uh, West Lafayette. We had Ray Phil Davis on yesterday late in the show. He talked about how he was looking forward to Isaiah Thompson being the point guard moving forward. Well, Isaiah Thompson's in the transfer portal. Um, I think a little bit of surprise there. Rob Blackman, I heard him yesterday with Dan saying that he was surprised by that. Um, you know, Braden Smith, the freshman out of Westfield, I think a lot of people are intrigued by. But, Jake, this is a position you got to go transfer portal. Yeah, I mean, look, I think all schools now, this is going to be part of the norm, right? Is moving forward now in college basketball, at the end of the year, you've got to look at not only what players you can get in for the transfer portal, but which of your players are on their way out, right? You know, Thompson's just not dynamic enough to be a big 10-point guard. Makes an open three, hit a shot the other night that was big for him in the first half, but not a distributor and just not what Purdue needs right now is a starting point guard. He did start 20 games this year, which, again, was surprising to me. uh, Speaking, by the way, the transfer portal, former Indiana Miss basketball, Sydney Parrish out of Oregon, announcing she will enter the transfer portal. It is believed that Indiana would be very high on her possible list 
Iowa, I think, in the mix as well, but you take a look at everywhere. But Another uh, interesting name I saw in the transfer portal yesterday, and I think he frustrated the hell out of Illini fans at time, point guard Andre Curbelo, uh, the guy that missed the layup over here at Gamebridge Fieldhouse to beat Indiana. He's got the hair. Um, I think at times he was very, very good, and at times very, very frustrating for the fighting Illini. So uh, it is transfer portal season alive yeah. and well. In college basketball. College basketball free agency has begun, Kevin. Uh, we come back. We're going to talk a little bit more about the league owners meetings. But, Mark, I did want to play the Frank Reich audio um, from yesterday. We haven't heard from Frank or Chris Ballard yet officially about uh, kind of the Carson Wentz decision and that trade actually taking place. Um, here was Frank yesterday down there with uh, various reporters, Stephen Holder, Joel Erickson, Zach Kiefer, on finally moving on from Carson Wentz. You know, once that trade was made, we knew what the landscape was. So we got to be able to, we know what the options are, and we don't know everything that's going to happen, but we're going to be patient, and we believe in our team and our organization, and we, right, you, you play that out, Zach, where, okay, we don't want to have seller's remorse, right? Where, and I, I think we had already determined that wasn't going to happen. We were going to, this was well thought out. It was not a quick decision. This is what we thought was the right move for the team. You know, listening to some of those comments yesterday, um, when they made that move, they in no way, shape, or form thought Matt Ryan would be available. Um, so I think if it was not Matt Ryan here, it'd be Jameis Winston or Marcus Mariota here. But uh, the Colts, admittedly, you know, very fortunate. At the same time, you know, Ryan's had some comments about this is a place that he wanted to come. So I think the Colts, you know, mainly with Frank Rag, I think they have put themselves in a position to where a guy like Matt Ryan, not that he had suitors just banging down Atlanta's door, but that he uh, wanted to pursue this opportunity here in Indianapolis. Was that interview at Rock Lobster? <laughs> By the well, way, I've had talked some nights at Rock Lobster. Jeez. I've talked to one person, just one, but um, who has had to had to deal with is the wrong way of saying it, but had interactions with uh, Matt Ryan since he's come to Indianapolis. That said, so far at least, wonderful guy. Down to earth, just super nice guy. Yeah, I think you're going to have to search long and hard to find somebody to say a bad thing right. about Matt Ryan. Uh, Jacob Tammy, former Matt Ryan teammate, is going to join us here in about an hour on Kevin and Query. We come back, though, um, some more comments from those league meetings down there in Florida. Um, you guys have heard me talk about the wide receiver position and my thoughts on that. It, the rationale on the Colts and their decision-making there really, really puzzles me. Uh, we'll get more into that, and also a Colts in-house free agent starting to make some visits elsewhere. We haven't seen a whole lot of action on that front, uh, but a name that has shown intrigue in the past is starting to make some free agent visits. Good Tuesday morning. Thank you for tuning in for tuning in to Kevin and Query again, along with Jacob Tammy of Michael Lewis, the new head coach of the Ball State Cardinals. He'll join us at nine o'clock. You're listening right here on 93.5107.5 The Fan. Join me today. The great Mike Chappell is going to join, and we'll talk some Colts. John Fox as a senior defensive assistant. The more smart guys, the merrier. Join me today. Let's talk some Colts in Final Four. Hi, this is Ted Bishop, PGA General Manager at the Legends Golf Club in Franklin. This year, we are celebrating our 30th anniversary of being in business, and I want to personally invite you to become a member at our course, which was selected as the 2021 Indiana Golf Course of the Year. We are offering a limited number of two-year Monday through Friday memberships starting at $199 a year. Yep, you heard it right, only $199 a year, and you can upgrade to a seven-day membership for only $50 per year more. If you ride, you just pay for the golf cart, and if you walk, there's no additional charge. These memberships will expire on December 31 of 2023. The Legends has 27 Fazio Design Championship holes. Our regular players will tell you that we are known for great playing conditions and a friendly staff. Join the Legends Golf Club today. Don't delay, because limited spots are available. Call 317-736-8186 or buy online at thelegendsgolfclub.com. And I'll see you on the first tee. Hi, I'm a jewelry consultant at Shane Company. Visit us and you'll be dazzled by our stylish selection of jewelry you'll enjoy wearing every day. We have lots of styles you can personalize. Just select your favorite gemstone to create a one-of-a-kind necklace or ring. You can choose a radiant ruby or a sapphire. We have over a dozen colors. Or a purple amethyst, London blue topaz, or peach morganite. We're known for our vibrant, natural gemstones. Customers love our signature shade of rose gold. It has a soft, blush tone. We have all the classics in rose gold. Hoop earrings, studs, tennis bracelets, you name it. 
We also have gorgeous gold chains in a variety of styles, including herringbone chains, paperclip chains, and more. If you want something extraordinary, check out Tom's Finds, our limited edition collections featuring rare gemstones from around the world. Whether you're looking to build your jewelry wardrobe with a classic, or you just want to treat yourself, come in and have some fun. Now you have a friend in the jewelry business, Shane Company and ShaneCo.com. Indy 11 is back for the 2022 season with the home opener on Saturday, April 2nd at 7. Having you there is what makes our game day so special. So come for the fireworks, smoke bombs, ribbon cannons, and a brand new Indy 11 checkered home kit. Available for purchase at shop.indy11.com. Be a part of Indy 11's Blue Out Blowout. Get your tickets now. Visit indy11.com or download the Indy 11 app. We'll see you at the mic on Saturday, April 2nd. Brought to you by your Central Indiana Honda dealers. Start a new career with a job that keeps your community safe. The Marion County Sheriff. Carrie Forrestal is hiring detention deputies to work in the brand new Community Justice Center. You'll supervise and guard offenders, making Marion County a better place to live. Starting pay begins at around $40,000 a year with a $5,000 signing bonus. Enjoy great benefits like complete health coverage and pension plan. Start your career as a detention deputy and earn the respect of your community. Apply today at joinmcso.indy.gov. A few weeks back, I was lucky enough to chat with the owners of Golden Oak Lending. This is no BS, but they are great people looking to help all of us save money. And even if you refinance as recently as last year, Golden Oak might be able to lower your interest rate even further and put money in your pocket. But the good news is, even though costs may be rising, you can still lower your monthly mortgage payments with Golden Oak's low 3.25% rate. Among the many things I love about Golden Oak is no cost for an appraisal. So I simply just picking up the phone, seeing if they can meet your goals, costs absolutely nothing. And who you talk to is going to be a local loan officer right here in Indianapolis, not some call center around the nation. Golden Oak's experienced local loan, local loan officers make refinancing and buying a breeze, guiding you through every step to ensure you never get lost in jargon or numbers. So no matter your unique situation or goals, you have an expert lending partner for life in Golden Oak Lending. Head to goldoaklending.com right now to see what your home equity can do for you. NMLS 114937, 3.25% fix, 4.361% APR, FHA, 15-year mortgage with 20% equ- equity, and approved cr- credit. Realizing Geico's great service and licensed agents are available at your fingertips is like realizing the plastic piece that comes with your pizza isn't a tiny doll table. It's to keep the box from touching the pizza. Hey, the pizza's stuck to the box. Where's that little plastic thing? Dolly needed it for her tea party. It's something that's been right there in front of you all along, like the dedicated GEICO claims team available to you in the event of an accident to get you back on the road quickly, or how your smartphone charges faster when you put it on airplane mode. Wow, what if I put it on rocket mode? It's something you can't believe you never realized before, like how GEICO's industry-leading app lets you pay your bill, file a claim, manage your policy, or summon help when you need it. Or how those holes in your shower caddy are there so you can store your shampoo bottles upside down. Showers happen fast when you're not waiting on shampoo. Great service. It's just one of the many reasons to switch to GEICO. They're all right there in front of you. Hey, it's Big Joe for Big O Tires, the place for the lowest price on every tire every day. And with each store being locally owned and operated, Big O knows that car expenses are typically unexpected, so they offer no credit needed financing. No matter what your budget, they take care of you at Big O. They'll also take care of your brakes, alignments, oil changes, fluids, batteries, and more. Make your appointment with Shane in Mooresville, Josh in Plainfield, Alan in Lebanon, Mike in Brownsburg, Steve and Victor in Whitestown, and Derek at the Indy location at 86 and Zionsville Road at BigOtires.com. Big O Tires, the team you trust. You're listening to Kevin and Query on 93.5 and 107.5, The Fan. 22 minutes before the hour, 34 degrees outside, little overcast. It is presumably, Kevin, not like that in the eastern coast of Florida, which I believe that is the area of the Jupiter-West Palm area, is it not, where the NFL owners are gathering yeah i think things wrap up down there today for the owners meeting started on sun sunday and uh, we heard yesterday from frank Wright and chris boward and various degrees i think jim mercy is supposed to talk as well um and zach Kiefer, stephen holder joel erickson among others down there and there was something that zach mentioned via frank Reich yesterday that i just i, I find very puzzling in their approach to wide receiver 
We know that's never been a big Chris Ballard position. Um, I thought that where you're at after five years of this building, how you look at how the wide receiver position has continued to evolve and just the presence of it in today's NFL with teams making deep playoff runs last year, I thought that might get them to change their tune. Uh, But that doesn't sound like it at all. Uh, Zach mentioned yesterday, one of the reasons the Colts have been quiet at wideout in free agency, Reich is high on the returnees. Behind Michael Pittman, you have Mike Strawn, Desmond Patman, Paris Campbell, Ashton Doolin, and even Kiki Kuti. Quote, we're not a desperate team that's going to say, let's go grab a guy that's a name just to grab somebody. Um, Those names, Jake, they are names that, to me, haven't really even shown much of a flash to make you sleep that well at night. And that's what is confusing to me. Their rationale behind this, it's not like they have a first and a second round pick in waiting. It's not like you've had guys on your roster that, hey, you know, for a month stretch, you know, they average what, four catches for 72 yards and a touchdown. We're talking about Ashton Doolin, undrafted free agent, never had more than two catches in 40 some career games. Desmond Patman, Jake, six round pick, two career catches in two years. Mike Strawn, seventh round pick, two career catches. Paris Campbell's played 15 games in three years. And Kiki Kuti was caught cut by the Texans and caught one pass for you last season. So okay. you're all of a sudden expecting the number two, three, four on your depth chart to be those resumes. And, and you're in a position to address it. It's not like you're handcuffed cap space wise or like I've mentioned several times the trades for Robert Woods and Amari Cooper would be the ones I think you would had to have pursued given the lack of draft picks that it took to get those guys and the fact that again the Colts are in a cap situation to where they could address this where you are not going to bed at night saying man that strong kid I know he didn't play the final 10 games of the season, but we need him to be the number two wideout for Matt Ryan next year. What is interesting is this. Two things. Number one, if you go to the Colts' depth chart online, which you have experience with, Kevin, right? You know they take this seriously, correct? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Indeed. I don't mean that as a touche. I'm saying, (laughs) I mean, we know that they take it seriously. Yes. Right now, on the Colts' depth chart online, and I realize that contracts, you, you know, come into this, but offense... Wide receiver on the left side, first string, blank. Second string, Mike Strawn. Like, he can't even move into the first string over a fictional player, right? (laughs) Like, he is behind a ghost man on the depth chart. Right side, first string, Michael Pittman Jr. Second string, Ashton Doolin. Slot receiver, totally empty. They have three receivers total listed on their depth chart on the website. Don't even list Campbell? Harris Campbell is not listed. Hmm. So the question becomes this. Is it possible, though, and by the way, they have Jack Doyle at tight end. Theoretically, this has not been updated. Is it possible that there are players, whether it's Mike Strawn, whether it's Patton, that Chris Ballard can say, and when Chris Ballard hears Kevin talking about this exact subject anytime that that chris ballard turns on the radio anytime that chris ballard goes to the station website you think he's and, listening from down there well i mean here's what he had to say about that it definitely made me think and i mean bowen every time i freaking read or listen to bowen it's like a constant freaking barrage of 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 uh white outs <laughs> okay um that laugh is what every other NFL team is doing while they look at the Colts wide receiver depth chart. <laughs> yeah, you're right. But is it possible, though, Kevin, that he sees in one of these or two of these players that even last year he saw enough to believe in them? He knew that Carson Wentz wasn't the long-term guy, so he's like, well, I'm just going to shelf him, keep him healthy, and that's my hidden weapon. Boy, that's a loser mentality. Well, I'm not saying it's not. You, you, I'm playing, you needed him last year. I'm playing though. devil's yeah. advocate. I mean, I, I just a couple things, Jake. I think it's a myth that 
oh, well, the Colts didn't have a quarterback, so no one wanted to come here. The Detroit Lions and Jacksonville Jaguars were able to sign wideouts this free agency. And this has been Ballard's M.O. throughout. This is not just a, oh, the Colts don't have a definite QB, so they're not attractive to uh, wideouts out there. This has been Ballard's M.O. with this position. Um, I get you can't cross off every need, but again, you know the importance of how wide receiver has evolved in the NFL. You know how the game has been called. If you have a true um, or just a high-level group that can be extremely potent, you have the resources to do it. And Jake, don't you need to support Matt Ryan? Like I feel like you didn't support Carson Wentz enough. I felt like at times you didn't support Philip Rivers enough. Sure, Naeem Hines, he'll slide into the slot, and he's going to be a guy that I think will benefit from these things. But I worry that you are limiting how beneficial the Matt Ryan acquisition can be with, again, hoping that these resumes, these are not the resumes of even a Quiddy Pay, a Kamoko Ture, a Dayo Adangbo, where they were early draft picks. They had even, you know, in, in Ture's case, he had shown some some flashes. These aren't even that. And I just, I wouldn't want to sleep at night banking on that room, all of a sudden making a huge jump. Nor do I want to enter the draft next month and say that first pick's got to be wide out because Chris Ballard, more than anyone, has said you can't expect instant impact from wide receiver in the draft. Well, look at Reggie Wayne. I mean, granted, he was hurt a little bit, but Reggie Wayne took a while to get going, right? I remember Reggie Wayne's rookie year. I'm Look, guilty as charged. I'm working at Channel 6, and I remember the, the Colts are getting ready to go down to Houston, and I don't remember how far into his rookie year it was when Reggie Wayne caught his first touchdown. And I remember thinking, like, well, finally... Now, what took this guy so long? And I, I remember thinking, is he going to be a bust? Well, you know, clearly I was wrong, right? I mean, even Michael Pittman had some ups and downs you know, his first year, and he was really accomplished at, at USC. I saw people mentioning, and I'm glad that you, you brought up Wayne. People were mentioning it yesterday. Well, remember Bill Polian's opinion on free agency and wide receiver. I think comparing the Polian blueprint to the Ballard blueprint is a rather ridiculous comparison at this point in their ten years. First off, how much has the NFL game changed in the last twenty years? No question. Secondly, and Jake, you would know this full well, Bill Polian five, six years into his tenure had a Hall of Famer at quarterback, two at wide receiver, I think eventually two at defensive end. I think Franey and Mathis will will get there. Mathis obviously okay. was early in his career. You had a left tackle that you didn't need to worry about in Tart Glenn as well. And just as a luxury item, you had a Hall of Famer at running back. Right. And you had in the moment, there's two kinds of Hall of Famers. There are Hall of Famers that are guys that no matter where they play, they're going to be in the Hall of Fame because they're great talents. And then there are guys that are in-season Hall of Famers. And by that, I mean... They play at a level that for like a two or three year window was a Hall of Famer within that franchise, but it's because the system was great for them. And so therefore, it doesn't mean that they would be able to just go anywhere and do it. But for that system, it was perfect. And at tight end, they had that too. Yeah. And I guess I probably should mention Bob Sanders as well. I know obviously his health wasn't there, he but be, he would be the Dallas. I mean, two Iowa guys, right? That, that both yeah. fit that exact mold of what I'm talking about. But again, what I'm getting at is you have, you had incredibly impactful players at incredibly important he, positions on your football team. And so you can't compare that to where you're at right now with Ballard. When the quarterback wide receiver, left tackle edge rusher questions have answers that couldn't be further from the answers that Bill Polian had found five and six years into his tenure. Here's here's what's fascinating to me. If you were to associate or connect the dots of the two regimes, and maybe it's unfair, but like anything else, we as human beings relate to things. We relate things to those in which we are familiar. And in this town, the Bill Polian era cults are, that's the thing with which we're familiar and what was obviously the elite I think that Bill Pullian became so synonymous with the Colts in his guidance of the franchise and his blueprint wasn't even a he didn't have fingerprints on the franchise he had the entire palm on the franchise and I do think 
that Jim Mersey grew to somewhat resent that. Then that went away and, and the love came back. But in the end there, I think that there was a resentment from Jim Irsay that Bill Polian became synonymous with the franchise, almost usurping Jim Irsay in the public opinion of who was the most domineering factor of the franchise. But that's a different talk show. But one thing that Bill Polian did, aside from building the roster, Kevin, was Bill Polian was a member of the competition committee. And early in the Peyton Manning years, when Indianapolis was going into New England in the playoffs, and Ty Law and Richard Seymour and Teddy Bruschi and Willie McGinnis were making life miserable for the Colts, but it was primarily the contact at the line for corners on the receivers that was checking back Marvin Harrison and Reggie Wayne and and Marcus Pollard and making things stifling the Colts' offense. And Bill Polian worked tirelessly to get league changes implemented about the hand-checking rules and the contact at the line rules to open up and massage open the passing game for the National Football League. The the numbers that you see now, the you know, the Derek Carrs throwing for forty eight hundred yards. A lot of that, of course, is the evolution of the play of quarterbacks. Don't get me wrong. But a big part of that is because of the loosening of rules in the way that you can defend the passing game. And what's ironic about that is it's the Indianapolis Colts and the brass of the Indianapolis Colts that opened that door, and the Indianapolis Colts now seem to be the one franchise that's sitting there letting everybody else continue to go in instead of walking through the door that's being held open for them. Yeah, that's that's an interesting point. Um, it makes no sense to me. I thought that how the playoffs unfolded last year would have opened their eyes a little bit more to this. Um, and I go back to... You know, people keep on bringing up the point. Well, again, in free agency, who are you going to attract here when your quarterback looks like this? Look at the Amari Cooper trade and look at the Robert Woods trade. You were able, in Cleveland's case, a fifth round pick, I believe, or I think it was a pick swap, maybe like a fifth for a six or something like that, to get Amari Cooper when Baker Mayfield is your quarterback at the time. But that was a trade, though. Right, right. That's that. Right. That's, what, that's what I'm getting at, Jake. Right. Like that's the route that you go to where the player can't say, "Well, that's your quarterback." Like, right, no, right. you're you're being traded here. Even if you want to play the devil's advocate of this is their quarterback situation, um, the same thing in Tennessee with Ryan Tannehill and Robert Woods. Robert Woods for a sixth round pick. Those are avenues to where the Colts, with all this cap space, and even with the Matt Ryan deal and the Yannick Ngakwe deal, they still um, certainly could have brought in Woods. Uh, Cooper would have been a little bit tighter on the cap, but you definitely could have fit him in as well. Those are moves that I just don't get. And I'm probably a little bit more in the minority, Jake, but I know you have said this. You have more of a question about Michael Pittman being a true number one. I think he's a number two. I think Pittman can get to number one status, but if their line of thinking or if, you know, people's line of thinking is more with you on the, well, I don't know about Pittman. Shouldn't that add to the emphasis of going out there and getting more of that right. supporting number two, whatever you want to qualify that that player as. Um, there were some interesting comments, Matt Ryan, related as well that we'll get to. Uh, but the rationale with wide receiver, it just doesn't check it just any sort you, of it? box for me. It, it, it doesn't check anything for me. It doesn't check anything based off the amount of cap space you have, who is on your roster, and how the league has evolved. All three of those. I think I think Chris Ballard's right to be honest with you. Like I think he's right, right, Mark. <laughs> Definitely made yeah. me think. And I mean, Bowen. Every time I freaking read or listen to Bowen, it's like a constant freaking barrage of 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 uh, wideouts. <laughs> Leave the man alone, Kevin. Stop Who's bothering him. Who's he laughing him? to? That, like the laughter, that kind of laughter. You ever watch the first forty-eight? <laughs> no, I haven't. Mark, you ever watch the first forty-eight? No. You know what it is, right? Yeah. It's a it's homicide detectives in usually Birmingham. I think New Orleans is one of the cities they I, do it. And I'm thinking to myself, where is laughing laughing in that? <laughs> you every person that they bring in that's guilty of a crime, like at first they're like, I, I have no idea what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. Da da da. And then they have this they all like once they kind of crack because they know that they've been outed as guilty they have like this nervous chuckle 
Like right there, his laughter at that is his way of saying like, yeah, I know that Kevin Bowen's right. That's exactly what that is. Okay, so if that's what I'm it hard, is. I'm not saying Chris Ballard is a homicide guy, by the way. <laughs> I'm just saying. If that's what it is, then why does he choose to operate in this way? Because, Jake, again, it's not like they're using this money elsewhere. Here's the thing. I think Chris Ballard is good at what he does. I'm not saying he's great at what he does. I think in the end, Chris Ballard's been there for six years. He has won a playoff game. He's like a game over 500, and every two years you're resetting the checkerboard. But I go back to, and I will take this and to the end of time, in any situation in life, you often are compared against what it is you're replacing. Hey, how are the new eyeglasses you got? You know, I really like them. They, you know, the old ones I had were just a little clunky. How's your new car? You know, it's, it is wonderful. Now, I will admit the old one I got had be, got better gas mileage. Everything is compared by its predecessor. Ryan Grigson was a guy that came in here, was laser-focused, like, here's what I'm going to do. He wasn't overly polished in dealing with the media. He His suits were a little tight. Chris Ballard comes in. He wears really nice Brooks Brothers sweaters. I've said this all before. He, he's got pretty eyes. He bats them. He's got a southern drawl that's nice. Brings out a wife, the wife and kids, and everybody can see what a family guy he is. He is a master politician in that regard, and so he has bought himself benefit of the doubt because he is compared against his predecessor. I think that th those sands are starting to run through the hourglass quickly now, but that's what happened for him in the beginning. And I think that because of that, he has a little bit of smartest guy in the room syndrome. And so I think he, by human nature, is going to stand pat and dig his heels in on those things in which he is most criticized to prove that he had the right approach. <laughs> Gosh, it just seems like such an ego-minded mentality. Uh, isn't that the NFL? And with Matt Ryan coming here, I think that would add to it as well. I mean, when Matt Ryan has been at his best, and hell, you could say this for any quarterback in the league, but... Matt Ryan has had elite level talent around him in the past catching spots, and I think that is certainly an avenue. Uh, this from Mike. To pursue. The way Ballard handles this free agency crap is terrible. Most Colts fans don't notice it because they are so in love with Ballard. I think there's some truth to that. I do. I think it's. I think it was trendy to not like Ryan Grigson, and I'm not saying that that was unjustified or justified. Whatever. I think it's trendy to like Chris Ballard. And again, Jake, I don't want to act like you need to be using free agency to build your roster, but when there is a clear hole and the in-house guys have the resumes that we talked about just a few minutes ago, you have a new quarterback, you have cap space, you don't have a first-round pick. Like You don't want to pigeon your, pigeonhole yourself in the draft when the second round rolls around in April and you're saying, nope, got to take a whiteout, have to take a whiteout here because we ignored it in the month of March and we've missed on it in past years, you want to have the luxury of being like, oh, wow, I didn't know that that, you know, insert player here was going to be available right. at, at number 42 as well. Um, Colts have made a move that I do find interesting. I think could be very beneficial uh, this coming season. We'll talk about that when we come back in. Some of the Matt Ryan comments and uh, what the trade compensation was initially that Atlanta or that the Colts offered Atlanta and then Atlanta countered with. I think that is interesting as well. Jacob Tammy is going to join us at 8.30 to talk more about Matt Ryan. Kevin and Corey, 8 o'clock hour, coming up, 93.5, 107.5, The Fan. <laughs> Put on your helmet. It's about to get real. Greg Cosell, what are your thoughts on Matt Ryan? Well, Matt Ryan's a hard guy not to like. He's been a really good quarterback in this league. He's essentially a pocket player, really smart before the snap of the ball, understands defenses, is not fooled very often. He's just a really good quarterback, and we'd be talking about him as a Hall of Famer if he won that Super Bowl. So Matt Ryan's a really, really good player. Dan Dockage, weekdays noon to 3 on 93.5 and 107.5. The Fan. Come rain or shine, high winds or mild breezes, blue skies or gray, it's a great time to consider getting vaccinated against COVID-19. Sponsored by BioNTech and Pfizer. Springtime in Indy. The home really took a hit this winter. Rhino Shield. Call 888-RHINO-41. That's 888-RHINO-41. So don't paint, don't vinyl, go Rhino. The Fed has raised rates. But there's still time to lock in Golden Oak Lending's low 3.25% rate. I'm James Hawkins, president of Golden Oak. With home values at all-time highs and our low rates, you can pull more cash out of your home. Call 317-706-GOLD today. Golden Oak Lending cured my blues. 
NMLS 114937, 3.25% fixed, 4.361% APR. FHA 15-year mortgage with 20% equity and approved credit. Ben and GM, the king of sports books, unleashes the spirit of Las Vegas with Bet MGM Rewards. Every time you make a wager at BetMGM, you can earn BetMGM rewards points that you can redeem for online bonus credits like free bets and risk-free tokens. Planning a trip to Vegas? You can also convert your BetMGM points into MGM rewards points that you can use towards dining, shows, and hotel rooms at over 20 MGM resorts properties located on the Las Vegas Strip and nationwide. BetMGM Rewards is sports betting's premier loyalty program featuring exclusive offers, incredible experiences, and valuable perks when you wager on the BetMGM app. Sign up with BetMGM or log on today to get an even bigger piece of the action with BetMGM Rewards. Visit BetMGM.com for terms and conditions. Must be 21 years of age or older to wager. Indiana only. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem and wants help, call 1-800-9-WITH-IT. 93.5 and 107.5. The Fan. WIBC H HD2, W298BB, WIBC HD3, W228CX, Indianapolis. The Pacers welcome the Denver Nuggets to the Fieldhouse tomorrow evening at 6.30 on 93.5 and 107.5 The Fan. Listening to Kevin and Query on 93.5 and 107.5, The Fan. Former Colt and former teammate of Matt Ryan, uh, Jacob Tammy, is going to join us here at the bottom of the hour. Tammy had a nice few years here. He's a good player, yeah. The Denver immediately after this? Did he follow Peyton there? Is that what it was? I think that's right. Went from Indy to Atlanta to Denver. and then Indy, the, Atlanta, Denver? To then no, the, Indy, then Denver, the LA Atlanta. Kiss. The L.A. Kiss that we discussed yesterday. He went Indy, Denver, Atlanta. My bad, yes. So, right, yeah, that was with Peyton, right? Mm-hmm. He's a Kentucky kid, right? Yeah, former fourth-round pick. Yeah, he was in Denver for three years, Atlanta for two, and then, yes, uh, the L.A. Kiss to cap your career. I'd like to ask him mostly about playing for the L.A. Kiss. That doesn't <laughs> shock me in the least. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. Good. Can you wait till he's maybe off air and just kind of Mark can give you his number and you can talk about that on the side? I think that'd be pretty awesome to ask him strictly about like how often was Gene Simmons hanging around? Did they have a cool theme song? I don't know if this is like a monumental <laughs> move that the Colts made, but I do think a hiring of a guy like John Fox is smart by Frank Reich. You know, I, I've always thought this with, with Frank. I actually think he's a better offensive mind than he is, you know, a, a head coach. And so I think the fact that he has in Gus Bradley and in John Fox, two guys that have been there, done that, that it's just a new voice. Um, and the fact that when you prepare for the Colts now, you know, maybe an opposing offense is like, well, I mean, you know, maybe we need to look up what John Fox did in his past years. But, you know, does that differ from from Gus, Gus Bradley at all? I do think that can help you out. And when Frank is a play caller and has so much on his plate offensively and certainly with how things unfolded with the passing offense last year, you know Frank is going to want to invest even more time on that side of the ball this year. I think the fact that you bring another head coach into the fold, smart. I I don't look at too many cooks in the kitchen. I look at it as guys with great experience at the highest level in the NFL, and that's beneficial to a coach that um, I think is at a very important crossroads in his career. Uh, Hey, guys, this from Brian. Ballard brought in an 1,800-yard rusher, and that hadn't happened here in years. I love him for that, but wide receiver does does need to be addressed. I, I get that, but – and look, Jonathan Taylor is a wonderful player, and he is a huge weapon and a great talent. No question about any of that. But I feel like in 2022, bragging about having an 1,800-yard running back is like – bragging about having a seven foot two center that averages 12 rebounds a game for you in the NBA and for like having Mark Eaton. You know what I mean? It just, I think a lot of teams could probably have an 1800 yard rusher. They just figured out that that's not how you win. Yeah, I, I do. I think Bowders are credit for Taylor for Leonard. Certainly. Sure. Um, I mean, Jonathan Taylor had 500 more rushing yards. Than anybody in the NFL. I mean, he's year. unbelievable. There's no question about it. And guess what? It got him. Totally hear you out. Totally hear you out. 
I mean, he, he was he was healthy when they needed a win in those last two games and they couldn't get it. You know why? Because they weren't doing a vertical passing game. Right? The first offer the Colts made to Atlanta for Matt Ryan was a fourth-round pick. Uh, ended up being a third. Are you surprised there wasn't more demand for Matt Ryan? I mean, professionalism seems to check every single box. Um Obviously, he's been extremely healthy throughout his career. Yes, the age is the age, but I mean, Carson Wentz got that, and Matt Ryan got that. Am I surprised there wasn't more? Not really, because he, are you surprised that Carson Wentz went for what he went for, and Matt Ryan went for that? No, because there's a there's a, a balance here. Um, Carson Wentz is younger, and you are taking on a player that you could still get a lot of years out of if you feel confident you can get him right. Matt Ryan, there's less tweaking that needs to be done, but you feel like you're getting him for a much shorter window. So they almost kind of balance out, if that makes sense. I just... I think Matt Ryan, I don't know Matt Ryan. I have not sat down with Matt Ryan. But in seeing him, his body language, his approach, Matt Ryan feels like the suddenly, and it's funny, like I, I told somebody yesterday, I go, you know, it just feels like he's an adult. Well, any player in the National Football League is an adult. But he feels like an adult amongst the adults. And I don't know, Kevin, quite frankly, I don't know if that's because I really think that about Matt Ryan and I'm impressed by how he brought his two boys in and they seem like nice kids and he wore the proper suit that fit him right and he looked really presentable and his hair is nice and he's well spoken that's, and that sounds like your description of Ballard there. All the right things. I know. I don't know if it's that. Or if it's that he's replacing a guy that just rubbed me the wrong way. I, I And I don't know. Look, by all accounts, Matt Ryan has been a great, great pro. Like, no I, I don't think this is just a, oh, that loser boyfriend's out the door. Anybody that walks in the door is going to make dad happy. Right. I mean, I, listen, it's uh, I will admit to this. I will admit to my own weakness here. And that. There was something about Carson Wentz that rubbed me the wrong way. And before people jump down my neck, I got news for you. I would be saying this exact. I, I could not care less about the vaccination status or decision of him. Having nothing to do with that. Are you, before, I thought you were going to say I have a mole on my back, so you probably don't want to jump on my back. I do, Well, you don't want to. Have you seen the scar, the, yeah, the you, train tracks You there? showed us in the There's first There's actually hour. a small train now. I got a Lionel train that's running back and forth on my back. Um, Carson Wentz, to me, there's just – and again – I apologize for this. That that I that I don't have the right words to pinpoint it, but there was just something about him to me that just felt smug. I don't know what it was. There was just something about him that felt something smug. Something you saw in Hard Knocks, something you I saw in You know what? I think he's I actually heard Carson Wentz when he was coming out of college doing an interview, I believe it was on the Dan Patrick show. And I remember saying to myself like, "Man, I want to pull for this guy. Seems like a nice kid." And then there was something about in the transition from Philadelphia to Indy. And look, I backed him longer than anybody. I mean, I, I was a Carson Wentz. I remember going on with, with JMV, I think, before I was doing this show with you, saying, like, look, I think he looks to me, he's mobile, he's got a good arm, I think he's a nice guy. Like, I thought he was the guy. And then just as the more I watched him, just his body language and the, the manner in which I feel like all interactions with him came with a an, a clause. Everything came with like, I'll do this for you, but but let's talk about what it's going to do for me. Are you going to promote my foundation? Are you going to do this? You can do that. Everything had provisions with it. And it just rubbed me the wrong way. And it just seemed to me like when the only time that I saw him interacting with his teammates or his teammates talking about him, it felt totally forced, totally contrived, and completely, it felt like Will Smith slapping Chris Rock. 
you looked at it and you went, eh, I'm not convinced this is real, but I can't say for certain either way, so I need to just kind of stay out of it. That's what it felt like. And even in the end, the photograph of him working out with, I think it was Pittman and Patman maybe, like a week before he was traded. People are like, see, look at there. What do you have to say now? Obviously, they get along. And I'm like, but do they? Because, like, why are they, Why are you hiring a professional photography staff to come in and do a photo shoot of you working out with your teammates unless you are aware of the fact that everybody is convinced they don't like you? So all of that, and, and I apologize for it because I can't pinpoint ex- And I'm not saying I'm right. But I think I speak for most of Indianapolis and in having that feeling. And so as a result of that, anything shy of Matt Ryan walking through that door and looking like Charles Bronson on a Harley, people would be like, hell yeah, adult the room. Let's go. And I just think that that he is the beneficiary right now of that comparison. But I also think that Matt Ryan has an internal confidence about himself, Kevin, where he's like, you know what? I'm the guy here. I appreciate that I'm wanted here, and I want to do what I can to help this franchise win games. And that's and I think it's just it's nice to just have that simplicity. And obviously, I think I'm curious to see how the locker room will react to that. You know, does that do a little bit more than is probably like tangible for us to weigh right here, right now on March 29th? Uh, Daniel, I, I think makes a really good point. He goes crazy to me how reactive Ballard is and not proactive. He talks about going from Tolzien to Jacoby, Jacoby, and then Ballard drafted Nelson and Smith after Jacoby got killed. Costanzo was going to retire, no plan there. Got Rivers, didn't draft the quarterback last year of the defensive line when Yannick Ngakwe was a free agent. Now you're trading for Ngakwe, and now he mentions the wide receivers. Next year he will sign a wide up. I think there's a lot of validity to that. And again, those positions, to me, those positions mean more. Sounds like I'm talking about the SEC conference. It just means more. Those positions that Daniel points out there, to me, it's the passing of the torch analogy where those spots are so vitally important that when you screw it up, and you saw the last era, Jake, Tart Glenn to who? Costanzo? Well, you had the Tony U. I mean, oh, yeah, there was yeah, about yeah. a five year right. gap there where. Well, you could make the argument Tony Hugo was a huge piece in the Colts in the the demise of the the Colts brass there, right? That's what I'm getting at. Yeah. It is like yeah. the, the the previous era, pull Bill to his son. Um, you didn't pass the torch as effectively as you needed to. It's difficult, but um, that I feel like is something that is hurt. By the way, uh, SEC conference. That's like saying ATM machine, right? Isn't that redundant? You can just say SEC, right? So yes, I, yeah, I guess I could. <laughs> Southeastern Conference. Aren't you glad yeah. you work with me? <laughs> Was that for Jake? It's for everybody. <laughs> Mark, Mark, and I are irritable because our side of the room is like ninety-five degrees now. You mentioned that as soon as I walked in, Mark. Hey, is it warm in there? So, no, I'm good. I'm fine. Now, and, now, and then you sudden, immediately I'm, ripped I'm, off your shirt in the first segment. <laughs> I'm so I'm hot. Over it's here. so hot in here. It I, is. I would like to propose something. Okay. Um, a retirement of sorts. Okay. For Jake? We, yeah, well, p- partially. Wait, not, you know, concerned here. Not, not Jake, you know, off air or anything like that. Um, I believe I saw it earlier. Kyler, I think it was, mentioned, um, could we hear the peacock sound one more time? Um, I think we should retire said peacock sound. An official ceremony? An official ceremony. Okay. Now, unfortunately... No peacocks will be harmed during this retirement, correct? Well, just, some of the sounds that you've heard, uh, I don't know if we can say that for truth, that uh, they haven't been harmed with some of those sounds Marcus played. Uh, but Jake, this was supposed to deliver to me earlier, but um, it actually came on Friday after the show ended. So I have a parting gift for you and your peacock family. Oh, really? Right? Yeah. Okay. And you're wearing a St. Mary's shirt, so nothing says <laughs> I support Indiana and Purdue basketball like wearing in St. Mary's shirts and then potentially a St. Peter's shirt. Okay. So well, I'm going to go get said shirt. So Kevin has, has walked over to his bag now. I am wearing an SMC St. Mary's College shirt, which I got when I was, I think, at campus there. Randy Bennett gave. Look at this. Look at this. Jake Query. Hell yes. With his. Go ahead and inform our audience out there on this. What now, it this says. is sweet. Strut of Destiny with the Peacock St. Peter's. This is. And I apologize to Purdue fans. Listen, I love Elliot Bloom. I love you, Matt Painter. I love Purdue. And Jake's Peacock but fan I love a Cinderella story. Long before the Sweet 16. 
So, Mark, one final time, if you will. <laughs> yeah, hell yes. The peacock sound before we can. See, I'm an equal opportunity offender. I got on my St. Mary's and my my St. Peter's shirts, right? Who yeah. do, who locked out Notre Dame? I was going to say, you're going to have a Texas Tech gear in here coming up uh, do, do tomorrow. Do we have it, Mark? Yeah, we got it. All right, here we go. Hold on. I, I want to make sure that we, we set you know the what? mood. Do you want me to change shirts all together and then you guys can see my uh, the no, the track, no, train no. tracks on my back we're, again? We're going to have to turn off the YouTube camera. All right, one all final on. time. Oh, gosh. Wait. There we go. <laughs> And then the dead peacock here comes. Oh, come on. <laughs> well, that's not... You're not killing the peacock, Mark. You got run over by the... Nobody wants to hear the peacock dying. <laughs> the sound <laughs> is complete. Okay. Okay. Jay okay. Query, one final time here on Hold Kevin on. and Query. Do you now, think we ever hear from St. Peter's ever again? No, because isn't their coach going to Seton Hall now? Yeah, I did say that. I mean, there have been other teams, you know, Oral Roberts... It's a little tight because I got the double T-shirt going. I, I got the XL. Well, I'm gaining weight, Kevin. I'm on the beta blockers. I think it looks good. I Very think it's a nice. great shirt. Our, it is a great our, shirt. our YouTube audience out there can see it again. Strut of destiny there. The Man, peacock. Are, hold on. Are you right hot there. or are you cold in Man, here? Man, you look like Chris Ballard getting ready for a presser with how cut you look there. Look, I'm. I'm just. You know why I look cut? Are you strutting? I look cut because I strut, baby, oh, in my God. strut of destiny you, shirt. I, Hell yeah! Are you hot in here? Or are you cold? I'm hot anywhere I go. Your nipples, especially in this your nipples shirt. You tell kidding? a different story. The, the, <laughs> the way this thing is cut. Are you kidding me? Double shirt. Hell you're yeah. poking out. Am I hot? Come on. Let's take a survey of our nine female listeners and see what they say. Hell yeah, I'm hot. <laughs> that looks good on you. Well, thank you. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. I like the shirt. And again, the sound that Jake has with the Peacock <laughs> fandom occurred long before Purdue in the Sweet 16. I know. I hated that it happened that way. Um, and trust me, I think I tweeted the night they beat Murray State. or Yeah, I think it was the night they beat Murray State. I'm like, well, I just decided to go on vacation all next week because I'm going to have to hear that sound for five straight days there. And unfortunately, uh, the train sound that uh, we were hoping to play all week long is no longer. Instead, the train tracks are on I my back. I worked on a thing on Friday, thinking we were going to play that on Monday, and it just pfft, right in the toilet. The boiler. Uh, yeah, the whole time. thing. Never going to see the light of day. Oh, can we play it anyway? No. No, let's play it anyway. No, it's not ready now. We'll wait till <laughs> Purdue has a you know strong move in the transfer portal or something along along those lines. There again, the final four Saturday: Kansas and Nova. The early line on that: Kansas favored by four, and then uh, Carolina and Duke. Duke favored there. By four and a half. Um, we have a Big O Tire Sports Center update to get to before Jacob Tammy. Yeah, Jacob Tammy's going to join us here in about 10 minutes, but let's get to a Big O Tire Sports Center update. The Sports Center update on 93.5 and 107.5. The fan is presented by Big O Tires, the team you trust. By the way, speaking of college basketball, the NCAA Final Four officials have been announced. It includes the pride of Indianapolis, Bo Borowski, who will be. Work in the game. So, too. Oh, I love Bo. Bo and I used to work at Plum Creek Golf Course together. Uh, Bo's the best, man. He's going to be on the show after the Final Four. said he can't do anything. Is he? Yeah, he can't do anything before. But he said he'd come on with us after the Final Four. Uh, Bert Smith, who you may recall in last year's Final Four, had the incident where he yeah. fainted. Uh, Bert Smith will be back as well. a couple weeks ago. Super nice guy. Of Florence, Kentucky, by the way. Florence, y'all, as the water tower says. Look at that. We're getting the officials on here. Uh, the women's Final Four is set. It's all number one seeds, and then that just great Cinderella story, the UConn Huskies as the number two seed. They won last night in double OT. That was a fantastic game. Um, I caught the highlights of it and then pretty much watched the entire uh, second overtime there, but that was a thrilling game there. So uh, UConn, Stanford, South Carolina, and who am I missing? Utah. Well, you, uh, you, UConn, me, Stanford, 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 South Carolina, South Carolina. Louisville, right? Louisville. They beat Michigan to cap the things. The girl from Louisville dropped the F-bomb on the radio. Last night. Oh, yeah. She oh, she covered all her bases. F, S. Yeah, she had it all going on last night after the victory <laughs> there. <laughs> Minneapolis for the women's final four. Have you been to Minneapolis? I have. Great city. Mark, you been to Minneapolis? I have. How about St. Paul? You been to St. Paul? Uh, no. I was in Minneapolis like three days after Prince died. That was crazy. Really? Really? That was wild. Wow. Went to Paisley Park. They're giving out memorabilia left and right. 
His Shana, family was just Shana went to Paisley Park and said that they take your cell phone before you get on the elevator. And she's like, why? And it's like, oh, that's the elevator. You know what I mean? Mm. It's where mm. gotcha. Prince got stuck in the yeah. elevator. Yeah. Lived right near a cereal, like a General Mills cereal factory. It smells fantastic. Over there. <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> really? It smells amazing. Yeah. Okay. Great smells. Of- you know, St. Paul is right on the other side of the river from Minneapolis. So if you went to Minneapolis, you probably went to St. Paul. St. Paul looks like Maybe Meridian Kessler, but like the Mississippi River is the size of the canal. I remember going to downtown Minneapolis. I'm like, there's a lot of strip clubs here. That was the first thing I noticed. <laughs> okay. I'm sure that's exactly what their Chamber of Commerce is hoping for. Their Pacers lose last night, 132-123 to the Hawks. Jake, 51 losses on the year, the most since 1989. Now, Cleveland, 107-101 over Orlando last night. We mentioned this only because the Pacers, of course, as of now, have that Cleveland pick that is lottery protected. So you want Cleveland to win, right? They snapped a three-game losing skid. And they're in the seventh spot currently, so they would be in the play-in format. So that is a team to watch. We'll continue to monitor it here in the final two weeks of the season to make sure that that draft pick does indeed come to the Pacers. Uh, The Hawks last night, Trey Young, 14 points and 16 assists there. The Pacers in their last three games, all losses, they've allowed 133 131, 132. Miles Turner officially shut down for the year. I would assume no surprise to you there. Yeah, not a surprise at all because at this point, what's the point in coming back, right? And you want to get him healthy. I think more importantly, look, the Pacers are tanking. They can't say they're tanking. The Pacers are tanking. Hasn't Malcolm Brogdon been like not playing because of rest, like three the last yeah, four I games mean, or something? The Pacers are, you know, at this point, literally. If you are a mainline player and there's any way that you're going to shut down, it's like, yeah, take the day off. I do think it's a big missed opportunity that you didn't get to see Turner as the lone big. You didn't get to see Turner with Halliburton. You get a, didn't get to see Turner and Buddy Heald space the floor together. Like, um, That's fair. It's going to be a very interesting evaluation period for the offseason on what you do with Turner going into a contract year, what you do with Malcolm Brogdon and his continued injury history as well. T.J. Warren hasn't played basketball in two years. Now he's a free agent. Um, so the Nuggets on Wednesday at the Celtics Friday, home to the Pistons on Sunday. Did you ever see the Minnesota Vikings game where the kid in the balloon flew out of the stadium? Have we discussed that? We played audio. that audio before, yeah. yeah, okay, yeah. You've had us play the YouTube video. Every, every time, see, I'm getting old, but every time I think of Minnesota, that's what I think of. Have we ran out of all your tricks? Yes. <laughs> I'm retiring. I'm like, I'm like Miles Turner. My foot hurts. Shut me down, right? Uh, league meetings down in Palm Beach. We heard earlier... From Frank Reich on the Carson Wentz decision. Here was Frank Reich yesterday on Matt Ryan coming to Indy. Pro's pro, you know, brings in high elite leadership, elite accuracy. Just been a model of consistency, but also a model of consistency at a very high level. Um, showing the ability to carry a team in those moments. When, when you need a team to carry him and then showing that time and time again. I mean, one of the one of the quote-unquote stats that jumps out about Matt is how many fourth-quarter winning drives he's led. One of the other stats that jumps out to me about Matt is his completion percentage over so many years, right? It's just so consistent. So I think it's a really great fit for the offense, um, for our team. By the way, he has an ability to carry a team when you need a team to carry them. Does that make sense? <laughs> I, I'm pretty I, sure that's what he said. I, was that at Rock Lobster? Do we know? Do we mention that earlier? Do you think there's a Rock Lobster in Palm Beach? <laughs> 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 I do think the fourth quarter resume of Matt Ryan was something that was no very doubt. attractive to the Colts. And something no I really heard him this past season. I mean, a pro's pro is correct. It's a cliche, but it's correct. Uh, Purdue needing some guard help in the transfer portal. You can make the argument even before yesterday's news that was true, but Isaiah Thompson um, transferring. He did start 20 games, played 16 minutes per game, averaged four points and just under one assist per game. Uh, yes, Braden Smith, you know, is a freshman. I think a lot of people are high on, but I think the transfer portal. I honestly think their starting point guard could come out of the transfer portal. I think it could look at that big of a need. Ethan Morton, I, I mean, is he really a point guard? I don't. You know, Brandon Newman, you want off the ball a little bit there, so I think Purdue needs to be active on that front uh, here this offseason. Um, speaking of the transfer portal, 
Former Indiana Miss basketball from Hamilton Southeastern, Sydney Parish, who has been with Oregon. Five-star recruit a couple years ago, announcing yesterday on social media that she has entered the transfer portal. Indiana, uh, I would think, I don't know, but I would think would be the front runner. Iowa in the mix as well, and I'm sure other teams will reach out, but uh, keep an eye on that. We've got a big one on the pitch tomorrow night. The U.S. men's national team at Costa Rica. Jake, if they win, draw, or lose by less than five goals, they will advance to the World Cup. Now, is Costa Rica already in, or does Costa Rica have to win by six to get in? They have to win by six to get in. It looks like they will be bound for a... uh, one game playoff, or I think a two game playoff, actually with New Zealand. Have you been to Costa Rica? No. Have you two, been to New Zealand? Playoff. I have not. No. Mark? No. Costa Rica people love going to Costa Rica. Yeah, my brother's supposed to do his uh, honeymoon there, but COVID happened. I was supposed to go to New Zealand. COVID happened. Not for your brother's honeymoon. Last time the U.S. lost by six goals in a game, 1979. Really? To who? France. French. So, they should be punching their ticket to the World Cup, which is this winter uh, from, what do we say, Qatar? I believe we said, you said like a guitar, Guitar like guitar, yeah. Guitar like guitar there. All right, we come back on Kevin Aquari, Jacob Tammy, former teammate of Matt Ryan's. He's going to join us, obviously former Colt as well. Michael Lewis at the top of the hour, Ball State men's basketball coach, is going to hop on with us as well. Jacob Tammy coming up next here, 93.5, 107.5, The Fan. Springtime in Indy. The home really took a hit this winter. Rhino Shield. Call 888-RHINO-41. That's 888-RHINO-41. So don't paint, don't vinyl, go Rhino. Join us live Friday at AL Emporium in Castleton from 3 to 6 p.m. Join JMV for the Bud Light Mini Hoops Challenge. See you at AL Emporium in Castleton starting at 3. Spring rains are here, so make sure you get to Big O Tires to keep you and your family safe out there on the roads. Big O Tire stores are locally owned and operated, and they give you the lowest price on every tire every day. Big O Tires also has additional savings on brands that you know and trust, like up to $190 in savings plus free basic installation on sets of four in-stock Bridgestone or Firestone tires now through April the 3rd. Big O can also take care of those brakes, alignments, batteries, fluids, and more with no credit needed financing that's tailored just for you. Schedule online at BigOtires.com. Big O Tires, the team you trust. You know, I have to see Jake's mole one more time. I think uh, I'm going to be pain oh, yeah. all throughout my body. And if you're suffering every day from joint pain, you can get help via QC Kinetics. We're talking real, lasting relief with natural biologic treatments. QC Kinetics is the nation's leader in regenerative solutions that can restore and repair damaged tissue with no surgery and no drugs. This is the relief you've been hoping for for your aching hips, knees, shoulder, and lower back. They're treating patients Every day in hundreds of clinics nationwide with remarkable success, life-changing results with zero downtime. It's the new, better, smarter, non-surgical, non-invasive way to deal with joint pain. And they're right here ready to help you right now. So call for a free consultation and make this spring and summer your best ever with no joint pain holding you back. Call QC Kinetics now for your free consultation. 463-235-7160. That's 463-235-7160. The Fed has raised rates, but it's not too late for you. There's still time to lock in Golden Oak Lending's low 3.25% rate. I'm James Hawkins, president of Golden Oak, and I urge you to call now. With home values at all-time highs and Golden Oak Lending's low rates, you can pull more cash out of your home. Call 317-706-GOLD today to get a free mortgage checkup and find out how much cash you can get. It's more than you think. That's right. Plus, Golden Oak still has millions of dollars available at near record low rates, and you can skip two mortgage payments. Lock in this low 3.25% rate. And if we can't close your loan, the appraisal is no charge. Call 317-706-GOLD. Golden Oak Lending Cured My Blues. NMLS 114937, 3.25% fixed, 4.361% APR. FHA 15-year mortgage with 20% equity and approved credit. Hi, it's Bob from Royal Spa. 
Soaking in a hot tub of Epsom salts is the absolute best way to minimize everyday aches and pains. And we know all about Epsom salts at Royal Spa. Royal Spa is the only hot tub manufacturer on the market today that can safely and effectively use Epsom salts. Royal Spa hot tubs are the highest quality hot tubs on the market. Stop into any of our free Indianapolis locations today or visit us online at royalspa.com. Ah, Royal Spa. The biggest piece to the puzzle is in place. Matt Ryan and the Colts. How good is Matt Ryan? What pieces fall next? Ursay says all in that this team couldn't do all in. I don't think they have the weapons enough to be really good. So what are you going after? When the puzzle's completed. The Colts have wide receivers. A definitive need right there at a very high level. You will hear about it here on your home for Colts football. You sit here, bitch, whine and moan every day and you know I will. 93.5 at 107.5. The Fan. You're listening to Kevin and Query on 93.5 and 107.5. The Fan. Half past the hour, new Ball State coach Michael Lewis joining us at the top of the hour, but joining us now on the Payless Liquors Hotline. He is the tight end that started with the Indianapolis Colts back in 2008, and after a stint of catching footballs from Peyton Manning, he then decided to do the same in the Mile High City, going to the Denver Broncos before then, catching footballs from Matt Ryan and then playing for Gene Simmons, which I think personally is the coolest part of it with the L.A. Kiss. But, Kevin, you dipped into your Rolodex to bring us Jacob Tammy. Yeah, Jacob Tammy is with us now here on the Payless Liquors Hotline. And first off, Jacob, thank you for the time. Hey, absolutely. Thank you guys for having me. Uh, what were your thoughts when you saw the Matt Ryan? I don't know how well you know Frank Reich. I think you guys maybe briefly crossed paths early, early in Frank Reich's coaching tenure. But what were your thoughts when you saw Matt Ryan coming to Indy? Yeah, uh, well, I'll tell you, I was really excited. And I do know Frank pretty well, actually. We were together in Indy, and then when he was with the Chargers, I ran into him all the time when we were in Denver, and we'd always chat before the games. And Frank and I were both, uh, not to go too deep into that world, but we were both believers and, uh, you know, did Bible studies, uh, you know, together. We're both really good friends with the chaplain in Indianapolis. You know, so I got to know Frank a little bit and kind of the type of guy Frank was uh, throughout, you know, when the Colts hired him, I thought this is – unbelievable it's fantastic you know it, it kind of crazy story in his own right but then yeah with matt when uh when i started hearing the rumors i thought man this would be you know you never know how something's going to work out let me just preface it you know with that but i think there's the potential for this to be an incredible fit and i guess what makes you so intrigued about this fit here in indy well you know i know a little bit about how frank operates and how he thinks i know uh you know, a little bit about how Matt operates and how he thinks and getting to be around Peyton for the time that I did and, and you know, being the luckiest guy in the world to get to go to Denver with him and, and you know, have four years in Indy and three in Denver. And, you know, I left I left Peyton for his last season because I got offered an opportunity to go play with Matt, you know, like and be a, be a starting tight end in Atlanta. And, uh, you know, probably wouldn't have left Denver to go, you know, a ton of places, but to go play with Matt Ryan and, uh, awesome coach and Dan Quinn. Like it was, it was a great situation for me. Now, the thing I loved about Matt in Atlanta was it was like a seamless transition. I mean, obviously, you know, I'm not saying Matt and Peyton are the same player, but I am saying it's the same quarterback feel. Like the guy's a leader. He's doing everything the right way. Like you, you go in the locker room and you know you don't ever have to question if the quarterback is going to be ready to play or is going to be doing everything he can to have the entire organization on point. And that's what you got with Peyton. That's what you got with Matt, too. This is perhaps a redundancy of that answer, Jacob, but to, to kind of parlay off of it, you know, Matt Ryan has been very, uh, you know, vociferous about the fact that Peyton Manning was a mentor to him and that he reached out to Peyton or Peyton reached out to him early in Matt Ryan's career and that he really sought the counsel and advice of Peyton Manning. Was there anything... Aside from the approach, was there any little thing that Matt Ryan did, a little wrinkle where you saw it in the locker room and went, that's it right there. That's the Peyton effect. You know, I think I love to have a good anecdotal story for you. I, you know, off the top of my head, I don't know. I think just the way that they operate uh, during the during the off times, you know, in the locker room, uh, going down the hallways with guys, on the, you know, on the way out to practice, you know, Matt, was all about just like Peyton. I mean, really, in in this way, like just 
the little things, the little conversations in between, you know, uh, meetings and, and going to the field where maybe there was one tweak that like that final little detail of something that might help you uh, come Sunday just to have a 30 second conversation about it uh, with Julio, with whatever, with me, with one of the running backs, whatever. Um, you know, there's so you could tell, I think it's evident. I guess my answer would be it's evident that those guys have had conversations over the years and that, that Matt, you know, tried to soak up as much as he could and, uh, you know, but I think Matt was that type of player himself in his own right as well, you know, from Boston College on. Like, we came out the same year, I remember, um, you know, the, our draft year, that, uh, you know, Matt Matt had some of those qualities built in already. I think any time he spent talking to Peyton, just, you know, just encouraged him and, and took him to another level. He's Jacob Tammy, former Colts tight end and, again, teammate of Matt Ryan's, and he's with us here on Kevin and Query. Jacob, earlier we played some audio from Frank Reich talking about the success Matt Ryan has had in fourth quarters throughout his career. Um, from your recall in those moments looking at him in the huddle, he strikes me as a guy that those 10 guys in the huddle looking at their quarterback would have some confidence in in those moments. And I think that's something the Colts lack, and this is me talking, lacked last year. They, they, they really struggled in one-score games and in the fourth quarter as well. What did you feel, particularly in late games, with him in the huddle? Oh, yeah, no doubt about it, man. I mean, again, not to continue to draw the comparison, but I guess that's the whole point. That's what we're doing here. But, I mean, you get in the huddle with either one of those guys. That Matt, Matt was the same way, you know, as Peyton in that respect. Like, when you get in the huddle at the end of the game, and it, look, I mean, it sounds cliche or whatever, and, you know, I'm, I guess, belaboring the point, but it's it's the preparation that is what makes that happen. It's not like you just show up on Sunday and like, all right, everybody's confident in the huddle. We're down seven with a minute and three seconds left you know i mean it just it's really not how it works it all week long you build that all off season long you build that and those guys both understand that and they're really great at it like you're building up you know there's a random thursday afternoon where you stayed after for an extra 30 minutes working a specific route with two or three receivers that are going to be in that huddle when it comes crunch time in the afc nfc championship game i mean that sort of stuff's what those guys are great about and and you know Matt. Matt just he's his record speaks for itself as it relates to all of the Matty Ice situations. Um, but just awesome dude to to play ball with at the end of a game. Jacob, I want to touch on something because I think it's an important point that you brought up in a good way, and and I don't want this to come off as me bringing a negative to it. Okay, but Frank Reich, you know, we know of Frank Reich's belief, right, as a Christian. I mean, that's very well documented. And I commend the fact that he wears that on his sleeve. So, too, apparently, does does Carson Wentz. And I can appreciate and respect that. But do you think that there's any possibility that Frank Reich allowed that bond of belief that he shared with Carson Wentz to cloud his judgment of Carson Wentz as a football player? Uh, That's a question that I'm not qualified to answer. I I don't know enough about... Carson Wentz's tenure there and his performance to really be able to answer that well. So I wouldn't know on that one. When it comes to the leadership of a quarterback, how much of it is not necessarily observing how your quarterback is inside the locker room, but rather having a quarterback that players would want to spend time with or feel bonded with outside the locker room and away from football and therefore feeling a brotherhood that goes beyond just the lines. Do you want to play harder for a guy when you feel you have a connection beyond just football with him? Yeah. Um, golly, that's a, that's a good question. Um, I think, you know, I, I was fortunate again, like luckiest guy in the world, you know, to develop a great friendship with Peyton. And, and we did a lot of stuff off the field, whether that was golf in the off season or, you know, what have you. And, and I think all that stuff, matters uh the same with matt down there and didn't have as much time but uh a couple seasons and and got to do some of that as well and i think you know but not everyone does the same things off the field either you know like uh you know matt and julio probably weren't playing a lot of golf uh you know in the, in the off season when they when they had time but you know maybe do another thing i think you know the off the field stuff matters i really think the bond you know i tell people this all the time they ask if you miss playing and And really, the truth is, I don't really miss playing. I really do miss being in the locker room. I mean, a lot. 
and that part is I think what's tough for guys and and uh, you know that's that that part you just can't prepare for it like I've got other things I love to do I have other interests I, I, I have a great life great family great pursuits going on right now like as we speak but it's still tough to be out of the locker room like that is such a unique and special thing and I think that's where the quarterback piece really comes into play like the guys that know how to operate in that space and that that's ultimately where you build trust and brotherhood and there's things you can do inside the walls that, that create camaraderie. And Dan Quinn was incredible about that in Atlanta. I, again, I can't speak to what happened after I retired, and I, I don't know exactly why that didn't pan out great, Like, but it was going great. He, it, things were – that place was awesome. Um, and so, you know, Matt, I think, I think the answer is if you can get both, that's great. But, you know, Matt, Matt will be a guy that can do it inside the walls. Uh, and, and I think it'll be – I think – the culture piece will be will be cool. Some terrific insight here from Jacob Tammy, again, former Colts tight end and teammate of Matt Ryan's in Atlanta. He's with us on the Payless Liquors Hotline. Jacob, from when you entered the NFL 2008 to the game you watch now, where do you see the biggest changes, just kind of league-wide? Uh, don't get me started on this, but, you know, uh, that you can call timeouts after a play happens from New York city now. So that's a, that's a change. Uh, I, I don't really, I don't want to open that box, but I, you know, there, there's always things changing with, with that part of the game. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I think guys continue, you know, you look at a guy like Davis from Georgia at the combine and it's just incredible. I mean, the talent, um, you know, I don't know how much has changed in four or five years, but it just continues to progress. And, the, the speed and, and, and power of, of these players across all different positions on the field um, is just cool to see. But I think I think the game's in a good place. You know, the things you know you want to nitpick would be for me some of the replay stuff, um, some of the New York City affecting game stuff, uh, and and some of the, uh, the overtime rules which are being pretty you know they're working through that right now that's always something that's kind of gets nitpicked and i think probably fairly um last thing that came to mind the the protection of the quarterback stuff i mean on the one hand we all get it the quarterbacks are the product but man some of these late hit calls continue to baffle the mind occasionally so those would be my little gripes what is your best, Jacob Tammy? Because you played with him in two different franchises, and I'm sure you've only been asked this a thousand times a week on golf courses. Give me your best Peyton Manning story. Oh, I don't know. Golly, there's there's a lot, but you know, I, uh, since you said golf courses, uh, one of one that comes to mind in that situation was a golf story. Uh, we were on a little trip one time, uh, playing a place down in Tennessee. Probably like eight of us from the Colts and. It was my rookie year, I think, and it was in the off season. Kind of a special thing Peyton put together. We were we were throwing routes and doing workouts at some random high school, and then we were, uh, you know, playing playing golf for a few days. And we got out on the golf course again. I'm a rookie, you know, kind of a know nothing, obviously. And one of the things my wife would always tell me about when I played golf, she would always remind me to put sunscreen on. So I thought, you know what? Uh, I need to do sunscreen today. We get on the course. I forgot. We're about three holes in. It's 105 degrees, super hot day. <laughs> and and Peyton comes up. He says, "Hey man, you want some sunscreen?" And I'm like, "Oh my gosh, this guy, Peyton Manning, man! Like, he's now I'm going to get to text my wife and tell her I put sunscreen <laughs> on. I mean, what a dude! Like the best quarterback in the world, and he's got sunscreen for me. So I get a big blob of something in my hand, and I start spreading it all over my face and neck. Uh, you know, everywhere that was exposed. And let me tell you, if Peyton Manning ever offers you sunscreen on the golf course, deny, deny. <laughs> Mayonnaise, deny. huh? No, no, worse. Oh, no. Flex, oh, flex no. All. Flex all. So, oh, uh, nice. It, was, it went from 105 degrees to 205 degrees <laughs> over the next hour. My face was on fire. Uh, so, yeah, apparently that's a little rookie, uh, you know, <laughs> Welcome to uh, the golf course crew that I did get to watch get played out on some other people over the years, so that's always fun, you know, to go from the butt of the joke to get to watch do it on other people. But uh, he was great at that stuff, though, man. Everyone, he, he, he loved a good practical joke. And, uh, you know, that's really one of the things you miss most about uh, 
being in the locker room all the time with Peyton, particularly his sense of humor was incredible, man. We laughed. We had a lot of laughs. We had a lot of great moments playing, a lot of great fun playing, but we had a lot of great laughs too, which uh, was just a real blessing, man. It was a ton of fun. But you know, the one thing, Jacob Tammy, that I think would be really neat and rewarding for you and is a huge credit to you, clearly by going to Denver, you know, you were a player that Peyton Manning trusted. I think every quarterback needs that safety net of a guy that when they're on the field, they have a trust there. And for that reason, if there are players that are possibly being linked to Indianapolis that played with Matt Ryan, even if statistically speaking, and I'm not saying it was the case with you, but like a Julio Jones, who I think probably is on the other side of the hill, but isn't there something to be said for a quarterback's trust and comfort in some guy's and therefore, we should look into it if Matt Ryan had someone he wanted to bring here. Hey, look, I, I mean, I'm I'm biased when it comes to this conversation for sure. So, yeah, I mean, I think absolutely. I, you know, I I don't know. Like, I want to think that that I helped Peyton in Denver, and, and we had some great years. I, you know, I had some. I, I think it goes without player, saying you but, did. But but you know, Peyton could have probably been fine without me. I mean, let's be real. You know the com- getting. I, you know I don't know how you quantify it, but it was an awesome opportunity. And I think I think it. Yeah, I mean yes is the answer. If Matt, look the best the best organizations, the teams that compete for Super Bowls, just look just look at them, just just look at them over the over the past twenty years. They're the ones where quarterbacks have a say, and quarterbacks have a say because they've earned that right. Like, if you want to be a great team in the league, you go get yourself a great quarterback. Not a good one, a great one. And there's only five or six or seven of them probably out there. And, like, that's what you have to have. Is Matt and Ryan one? Yeah, I think he's on that list. Yeah, I do. I think he's shown he can be on that list. Now, look, I mean, Matt's getting older now, too, right? I mean, I don't know if it's the same thing in five years. Not everybody's Tom Brady. Um, but, like, and when you have that guy – Let's say you've got a guy that's in the top ten. You know, you treat him like a guy that's in the top six. Give him an opportunity to be that guy for you, right? Like that—that's—that's that's what I've seen work. Giving taking the quarterback that has a chance to be a great one, or has proven he can be a great one. Give him an opportunity to show you that's who he is. Make him as comfortable as he can be. That's what it takes to win in this league. Ultimately, you can take up talk about all the other pieces, but if you don't have great quarterback play, you're not going to do what you want to do. Jacob, what is uh, life like for yourself nowadays, and where do you call home? Well, man, this is uh, – life's crazy, all right? I mean, we've got – I do investment work, so uh, I get a chance to work with some athletes and some regular folks too, which is a lot of fun. I get a chance to stay connected to the game a little bit through that and uh, manage investments, which I, I just really love. Uh, we also have an Angus cattle farm uh, nice. that's been in my family for like 110 years, so – uh, yeah, not many people with that combination out there, but that's a, that's just a ton of a ton of fun. And is that uh, in Kentucky? Yeah, Danville, Kentucky, right in the center of the state. Uh, investment office in Lexington, uh, cattle farm in Danville. We you know traveling around for work. Some coaching uh, you know eleven U Central Kentucky Sliders travel baseball team. Look out, we may be in Noblesville at some point later this year. So. I mean, there's a lot of big stuff happening right now. I want to see um, you and you and Sorgi's squad face off. Isn't Sorgi hey, coaching? I think I've heard Sorgi's in the game. I think he's with that really good organization up there. We don't want to see those guys, but uh, <laughs> you know, we'll we'll find another maybe one tier down. Uh, but it's a ton of fun, man. I love it. I'm you know helping with all the kids stuff, and uh, it's amazing how much fun that can be. And it, we're just really blessed having enjoying life back around the grandparents back home in central Kentucky and too busy, but it's all, it's all good stuff. Did you get a ton of, and I mean, Wikipedia is the one that told me you played for the LA kiss. So take it with a grain of salt. But if you did, did you get a ton of like kiss CDs and t-shirts? I don't know who runs my Wikipedia. Uh, it might be like, you know, a relative. I have no idea. I think my aunt, I think I have like a great aunt that's like been fooling <laughs> with that thing. And I, I don't know where, what that reference is to. So, so you didn't play for the bad, LA kiss in 2017. 
bad. So whoever's whoever's putting stuff on my Wikipedia is is, uh, is having it. a great time with it, apparently. But no, I didn't. That is a total buzzkill. I was super excited to get Gene Simmons stories. I know Jake wanted Man. to lead off okay. with that. I was, I was glad that he waited until the end. On Here's that. my last question for you. My last question is: How long did it take you to get up off the floor when Kentucky got beat by St. Peter's? Oh my gosh, man! What a deal! I mean, here's I'll just you know as a long time Kentucky guy and and just bleed blue since I was born. Um, that was heartbreaking. I will I will say immediately it's like if you're going to get beat like this looks like the team to get beat by and the like the coach was incredible. You know the hallway guy was just like you could tell he was a star in his post game interview. And then to watch what they went and did, I mean they beat right. everybody right. I mean they, they ran out of steam obviously just here against UNC, but. Uh, they played some ball now. They played some basketball. It was disappointing because I tell you, this Kentucky basketball team this year uh, was a lot of fun to watch and a really good squad and 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 some real some guys you just really love to root for and follow. It was a fun team, so that that stunk. But hey, credit to St. Peter's, man. What a what a run. What a run. I was gonna say you got a little bit of a uh, empathy here um, from Purdue fans as well with them no bowing doubt. out to St. Peter's in Sweet 16. Jacob, I can't thank you enough. Um, I know a bit of a shot in the dark to get you on, but really appreciate the time and the insight. And uh, good luck with everything down there. Again, investment baking and Angus Farm, like you said, boy, that's quite the combo. But sounds like a hell of a crazy life for you. And uh, hopefully, uh, if you're ever in Indy, we can have you on again. Yeah, thank you guys for having me. Happy to jump on. That's Jacob Tammy right there, again, former Colt and former teammate of Matt Ryan. I really enjoyed that interview. Mark will have that up on the podcast. And always a good Peyton Manning prank to throw in there. Yeah, I thought for sure he was going to say it was like mayonnaise or butter or something like that. Yeah, we should do that with Jake's mole. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Put some flex all on that bad boy. That'll really what, get you, you back wanna, to normal. Do you want to see the trend? Should I show the the? We uh, got to hit folks? a break here on Kevin and Query. <laughs> Michael Lewis Let's in see, 10 on. minutes, yeah, 93.5, 1075, The Fan. Madness of Hoops is down to four, and real sports bettors use the free Prop Swap app to find the best deals on all of your favorite teams. Prop Swappers make thousands of dollars simply buying and selling college basketball teams. And here's the best part you can buy and sell on Prop Swap without even leaving your couch. And right now is the time to check it out with the Final Four coming this week. And Blue Bloods are everywhere with four teams left. And that means plenty of action to buy or sell on Prop Swap. You can jump on the Prop Swap app, buy a couple tickets, and enjoy buckets of cash and the moments of madness. See a ticket you like, but think the price is a little bit too high? You can submit a bid for a price you think is fair, and then buy it. You'll find exclusive fantastic features on Prop Swap, like filtering listed bets based on the best value, a free activity fee to stay in the know with red hot tickets for sale, and a loyalty rewards program that turns your ticket sales into extra bonus cash. Prop Swap is America's number one app to buy and sell sports bets. Download the free app today. Hey guys, it's the new year. Are you still struggling with erectile dysfunction? I've yet to meet anyone that enjoys timing those intimate moments around a pill. Well, now you don't have to. The advanced wave technology at Pine Grove Medical Clinic has been shown by Cambridge University and the Cleveland Clinic to restore and even regrow blood vessels. It can improve circulation and eliminate erectile dysfunction. No pills and no side effects. If you're ready to put a stop to your ED, call us in the next two minutes and you'll receive a consultation, assessment, and blood flow ultrasound free. Plus, a special gift that produces immediate results in the bedroom. You're going to love that. Trust me. This is a $600 value, free to callers now. 317-552-1111. That's 317-552-1111. Guys, get rid of your ED and get that spark back. Call Pine Grove Medical Clinic now to qualify. 317-552-1111. Switch to Spectrum Mobile and get unlimited data for only $29.99 per month each when you get two or more lines. You could save hundreds on your mobile bill. Plus, there are no added taxes, hidden fees, and no contracts. Try the Spectrum Mobile Savings Calculator today, and in three easy steps, you'll see how much you can save. Visit SpectrumMobile.com slash save. Offer valid for new customers on two or more unlimited lines. Spectrum Internet required. Restrictions apply. Visit SpectrumMobile.com for details. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. This is Claudia's O'Reilly Auto Parts story. I had just moved to a new city and barely even knew where the grocery store was yet. When my car wouldn't start one morning, I didn't know who to ask about local shops. But I remembered a name from back home, O'Reilly Auto Parts. I called and they pointed me to a great mechanic just down the street. 
Now, I feel a little more at home. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts It takes courage to talk with that someone special when there are problems in the bedroom. Erectile dysfunction, or PE, can shatter your confidence and make your relationship challenging. You can put an end to these issues. Have the courage to make just one confidential visit to the Indianapolis Men's Clinic and get that spark back in your relationship. The doctors at the Indianapolis Men's Clinic offer the latest solutions for all ED and PE issues, and you'll see results in your first visit, or there's no charge. Call 999-9000 to meet with their licensed providers, no matter your age or your conditions. Diabetes, high blood pressure, prostate cancer, low testosterone causing your issue. It doesn't matter. They can help. Call the Indianapolis Men's Clinic at 999-9000. That's 999-9000 or online at IndyMensClinic.com. Have the courage to take that first step. Indianapolis Men's Clinic, your key to a better life. Indy 11 is back for the 2022 season with the home opener on Saturday, April 2nd at 7. Having you there is what makes our game day so special. So come for the fireworks, smoke bombs, ribbon cannons, and a brand new Indy 11 checkered home kit available for purchase at shop.indy11.com. Be a part of Indy 11's Blue Out Blowout. Get your tickets now. Visit indy11.com or download the Indy 11 app. We'll see you at the mic on Saturday, April 2nd. Brought to you by your Central Indiana Honda dealers. Soccer Saturday between Indy 11. If this is your football, this is your show. Saturday at 9 on The Fan. You're listening to Kevin and Query on 93.5 and 107.5. The Fan. So, Kevin, here's the thing. Uh, we kept blabbing with Jacob Tammy, which actually was fantastic. Gosh, he was great, wasn't he? Yeah, and would love, uh, we'll get that up on the podcast on the website, 1075thefan.com. But that means we ran a little bit over, and Michael Lewis is waiting in the wings. He's waving at us through the window, right? He, well, he is. Uh, not literally, but yes, figuratively, he is. Um, the Tammy quote that stood out to me, Jake, about Matt Ryan. He's a leader. He does everything the right way. You don't have to ever question if your quarterback's going to be ready to play. Yep. And I know that might sound like a, well, duh, they get paid this amount of money, this Uh and that. But I do think this locker room and those huddles, in particular late in games, will feel a level of comfort and confidence that they did not feel week in and week out last year. I don't know how tangible that is. I don't know how, you know, really to quantify that, but who knows? Two and five and one score games last year. Will it be different this year? Listen, if he has, if what Jacob Tammy said is any indication, people should probably be relieved or at least find some comfort in the fact that Matt Ryan's their guy, right? I don't know for how long, but that he's their guy. It's an upgrade. And I do come back to the Tammy quote that he also said about, you know, you want to be a great team, you go get a great quarterback, not a yeah. good quarterback. I know it's difficult. But again, that has to be the mantra when you're operating with the most important position in sports. So Mark will have that up on the podcast. Jacob Tammy asked him a little bit about what he's doing nowadays as well. Of course, a Peyton Manning prank in there, and I really enjoyed that conversation. Hopefully, the same thing will be true with Michael Lewis. As always, Michael Lewis one one of my favorites to listen to. We've had him on this show before, and excited to talk about the future of Ball State basketball with him. He joins us next here, 93.5107.5, The Fan. The Ride with JMV. From The Athletic, he covers the Raiders. Vic Tafer, how would you describe Yannick Ngakwe? Gus Bradley, just loves him. And uh, Gus brought him in last year to kind of lead the you know, veteran influence of some of these guys. Ngakwe's matured a lot the last three or four years. Uh, Gus knows that his strengths lie in getting pressure on the quarterback and helping the defense get things done. The Ride with JMV. Weekdays, 3 to 6. On 93.5 and 107.5. The Fan. There's never been a better time for a cash-out refinance. Apply online today at thehomeloanexpert.com. NMLS number 1326241. Big O Tires is locally owned and operated with the lowest price on every tire every day, plus online appointment scheduling and financing made easy. Big O Tires, the team you trust. Turn it up. Greg Hubler Chevrolet proudly presents Trace Adkins. With special guests, Lone Star. Diamond Rio, Big 
Country and Rose O'Neill. Saturday, June 18th at the Morgan County Fairgrounds in Martinsville. Three seconds. Save 25% off all tickets April 2nd, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Only at Craig Hubler Chevrolet in Canby. Trey Atkins, Saturday, June 18th at the Morgan County Fairgrounds. More info at HankFM.com. FanDuel Sportsbook NBA Same Game Parlays give you the chance to turn a little bet into a big-time payday. Hey, it's Mark from Kevin and Query. Choose any NBA game and combine multiple bets, like the amount of three-pointers made, who will be the leading scorer and more into one wager for bigger wins. Make the midseason feel like the playoffs when you bet on FanDuel Sportsbook. The Bucks take on the Sixers tonight. Here's a three-leg parlay for you. Giannis onto DeCumpo to score over 29.5 points. Joel Embiid to score over 30.5 points. And James Harden to record 10 or more assists. A $10 bet will pay out over $60. Same game parlays is one of my favorite things on FanDuel Sportsbook. Plus, the app is safe, secure, and easy to use. And when you win, you get paid fast. And if you're a new customer, you can bet $5 and get $150 in site credit instantly guaranteed. So download the FanDuel Sportsbook app today and sign up using promo code MARK to bet the NBA today. That's promo code MARK exclusively on the FanDuel Sportsbook app, an official sports betting partner of the NBA, M-A-R-C. 21 and over and present in Indiana. First online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued is now a drawable site credit that expires 14 days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See full terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-9-WITH-IT. Indianapolis. At GEICO, our employees' careers matter to us. An inclusive office matters to me. We hear you, Kelly. GEICO has employee resource groups that bring people from all communities together because diversity matters. Your hopes and dreams matter. Even giving you a little space, your lucky bobblehead matters. Want to work at GEICO, Randy? (laughs) He says yes. When it comes to your career, what matters to you matters to GEICO. We're now hiring claims, sales, and customer service agents. Apply today at careers.geico.com slash Indianapolis, and let's get growing. 93.5 and 107.5, The Fan. WIBC HD2, W298BB, WIBC HD3, W228CX, Indianapolis. Join me today, the great Mike Chappell is going to join, and we'll talk some Colts. John Fox as a senior defensive assistant. The more smart guys, the merrier. Join me today. Let's talk some Colts in Final Four. It's Kevin and Query on 93.5 and 107.5. The Fan. Yeah, Jake, my mom is absolutely thrilled right now. Um... Not about your mole situation, <laughs> but not only did her... She's a big fan of Jasper, Indiana. Her oldest son, Ryan, has married a Jasper girl, and now her alma mater is led by a Jasper native and the one and only Michael Lewis, who is the new head men's basketball coach of the Cardinals. Uh, Michael, I- indirectly, you didn't know this, but thank you for making Colleen Bowen a very happy Cardinal on this uh, <laughs> Tuesday morning. <laughs> We, I, you got to be careful of those Jasper girls now. I I married one. I married one, and you, and you just you got to be careful. It's day to day now. <laughs> it, you, do you know the Kremp family at all do. down there? It is it Absolutely. is a popular name. It it is very popular. We ha- we have several of those popular names, but I do know uh, I do know the the Kremp family. Um, great great people. If we're talking about the same one. Oh yeah. Um, and uh, you know Jasper is a really cool community, man. It's a really Really neat place to grow up. Uh, they're very supportive of of uh, their high school athletics, and it was it was. Uh, I'm very proud to say that I'm from Jasper, Indiana. I think a lot of people are very happy to have you back in this state. I know uh, you made a stop at the state finals this weekend. What has been on the early Michael Lewis checklist in Muncie? Well, we're just trying to trying to get in front of the team. We had our first team meeting yesterday, um, which which went well. Um, they they ended up playing. Uh, some open gym, so I used. Uh, we're in a, a period of time where you you get two hours a week with your guys on the court, so I I used 40 minutes of that time and and sat in there and watched them and got a got a better feel from them. But just trying to be in front of them, spend some time, get to know them, have them get to know me, and then you know all the other really important things like getting shown where the coffee maker is in the office and uh, all the codes of the doors and you know all those things that are necessary to get this thing rolling. You know the reality is, Michael, you were at obviously in my opinion the creme de la creme of college basketball programs in ucla and it goes without saying why one would go from being an assistant to the head coach because of the the promotion of that but one would think for that reason there were a lot of schools where you might have been able to have that opportunity other than it being your home state what sold you on ball state uh the leadership 
um, you know, from President Mearns to to Beth Getz, um, being able to spend time with those two and just hear uh, their vision for uh, the university, their vision for the role that athletics can play in helping them achieve that, uh, and in particularly what the basketball program uh, can do for the department and the university. And it just kind of went hand in hand with what I've been looking for uh, for some time to um, put a program together, um, build a program that I feel like can win at a high level. And then obviously, like what you talked about, uh, being in the state of Indiana where uh, I'm so familiar with uh, everybody basketball related. Uh, I think it's the high school coaches are outstanding. I think the AU programs are ran by guys that are doing it for the right reasons. Uh, I, I just think basketball is, is taught and played at a high level uh, in this state and in this region, and I think it's a perfect place to build a program, and I think Muncie um, is very attractive, and Ball State's very attractive to guys that that are that love basketball. If you love basketball, you and I are going to get along just fine. And I think it's a, you know, I think it's just ready to take off and can, got a chance to be really successful. But, you know, like like I I've, I've told told the guys, like everybody everybody has a plan, right? It's kind of like the boxing. Everybody's got a plan and all these great ideas, but eventually you got to step in the ring. And so I'm just trying to get to know these guys, try to build a roster and make sure that when it's our time to step in the ring that we're ready to go. You know one thing, Michael, that I I think is worth pointing out, and it's disingenuous to say that I'm around Ball State basketball a lot, right? So this is admittedly a peripheral observation. Well, we can change that. I mean, it's not that far. <laughs> that's, that's true. It's only, what, an hour away, right? Not even that. Not um, even. And my nephew goes to school there. Now, James Whitford was a guy that – I know that the wins were not where Ball State wanted them to be, and I understand you know, that that leads to change. But my observation is that he did lay – a foundation of young players that were doing things the right way and that conducted themselves in a manner that the university could be proud of in terms of them as people. Has that been so far your observation of what you're inheriting? Yeah, I think there's some really good uh, pl- uh, kids in the program um, that are good players that, that you can you can build a foundation on. So obviously very you know grateful for um, the, the time that James was here and um, he's been doing this a long time, just as I have, and it's it's you know these these things happen. It's part of the business, but uh, I'm very uh, thankful for what James has done at Ball State and for for the guys that he has in this program. I think it's it's uh, something that it's also something that made this job attractive. Is as I looked at it, you look at the roster, and I think there's some guys in there that that you can build a program around, and I'm excited to do that. He's a very familiar name and voice to these parts. Michael Lewis, the new head basketball coach at Ball State, is with us here on the Payless Liquors Hotline. Uh, Michael, if Jake and I show up to Worthen Arena next fall, winter, what do you want us to see in your basketball team? Well, I want you to see a team that looks like we've practiced, you know, and, and looks like we've we've been well coached. I want us to be disciplined. Uh, I want us to be tough. I want us to play smart basketball. I want uh, – I want you. I want you guys to see us making the the right easy basketball play. I don't want to put guys in positions where we have to try to hit home runs. You know, I just want to hit single after single after single and just, um, you know, wear our opponents down, <clears throat> make it be very difficult to to score score against. You know, I want to be uh, tough and physical defensively. Um, you know, get into them and just. I, I don't want people just to roll in Muncie, Indiana, and think they're going to roll in and roll out with a W. You know, I, I want them to come in here and and know uh, that they're going to be in for a fight. Um, that our guys are going to compete and uh, just go out there and, and make Ball State um, competitive and, and, the, and the fans of Ball State proud of what we're putting out on the court. And I think if we do those things, uh, the results will, will follow and we'll get what we want out of it. How do you view Ball State within the MAC? You know, I, I, it doesn't strike me as a conference that maybe has had one team, you know, dominate, dominate it over the last decade or so. I've kind of been surprised that Ball State hasn't found more success within that conference, but how do you view you guys within the MAC? Well, I, I, I don't see any reason why we can't be at the top. I wouldn't have come here uh, if I thought anything else. So uh, it doesn't really matter, you know, what you know other people feel about Ball State or where they view us in the MAC. I view us in, a, in we have an opportunity to make a big jump. I think it's a very well-coached league. I think it's, um, you know, I think it's a league that is very similar to the Big Ten, and what I mean by that. It, it, it's the parity. You know, you go through a long season, and, and I think teams in the Big Ten, they just they beat up on each other as the season goes. I think it's very similar uh, in the MAC. I think there's a lot of parity in the MAC. I think your games are very um, – come down to a few possessions, a lot of close games, and we have to be able as a team to flip the five or six possessions 
that this team was losing in the past and, and put them on our side and try to win those close games. And ultimately, you're trying to put yourself in a position to win three games in three days in Cleveland. So if you can be com- competitive, move yourself to the top half of this league where you're competing and putting yourself in a chance to win a championship, um, that's exactly where I want to be, and that's exactly why I came to Ball State. Michael, when we come to that game and we see your team and we say to ourselves, that's a well-coached team, that's going to be a credit to Michael Lewis and then what members of his coaching staff? Well, that's a that's a work in progress. Um, I, I can't really uh, put names on that yet. I uh, am working through that, but it, I have been um, very pleasantly surprised with the interest um, that is in Ball State, the excitement that is around this program, not only from future players, um, but people that want to join this program and help these young men achieve great things. So um, that is something that I think in the next uh, you know seven to ten days that that. Uh, the public will know about, and I think they'll be pretty happy about it. And these parts, as we say, uh, there's always conversation. Whenever Michael Lewis's name comes up as a coach, when you were at UCLA, and I'm it, look, you know this. I mean, obviously, the reports, the words about you know your connections to Indiana, and whether or not you would join Indiana staff, and then Dane Fife is on Indiana staff, and now Dane Fife is not on Indiana staff. So, could, so could, and, and those two names now have become intertwined. What is your relationship with Dane Fife, and could you partner with Dane Fife? Uh, Dane, Dane is a teammate of mine. I mean, obvi- obviously, we you know we played two two years together in Indiana. I think whenever you you put that uniform on and you go through the things that that we went through on a daily basis and tried to compete at the level that we tried to compete at, there's a bond, um, and that's a bond that continues today. Um, you know, I think with with what went down in Indiana with Dane, like you know, that's that's something that that uh, him and Indiana have to deal with, but. Uh, I've been I've been there for him as a friend. We've had a few conversations about that. Um, I think he's I think he's an outstanding coach. I think he's going to land on his feet and find the right spot and be successful. Um, and that's that's all I'm there. I'm, I'm I'm there as a former teammate and a friend. I don't you know I don't get into the you know who's right who's wrong. Uh, we both uh, care deeply for for IU because we we wore that uniform and you guys know how I feel about. Um, the connection to that place and what that place has done for me in my career. I don't think I'd be sitting here in, at Ball State if I would have ever never played in Indiana. So, um, you know, it's provided both of us a lot of opportunities. But, uh, you know, I've been trying to be there as much as I could for Dane uh, as a friend and trying to uh, help him find uh, what's next. You know, obviously, Michael Lewis is our guest, the new head basketball coach at Ball State. And I know people are thrilled to have you at Ball State. I know that you're thrilled to be at Ball State. And I look forward to it. Yeah, I mean, you don't just jump out of a car and go run up a side of a hill on 69 if you're not excited about something, right? That's right. And take <laughs> and stop and take a picture underneath the sign, right? <laughs> hey, and, you know, I had I had to ask, I mean, you know, I had to step outside my comfort zone and kind of ask this little group of people, like, they were looking at me all crazy, like, hey, can you take me a picture? And looking at me like, no, I need this picture. Like, I got this big banner hanging above my head. Like, I need this picture, you know. But they were great. They were great. Um was there ever a time where you officially have had discussion about or did you de- did you decline an opportunity at Indiana because of the way the blueprint was laid out of who would be ultimately a successor to Mike Woodson? No, there you know that's there was never talk about that. I never uh declined anything. Like I I you know I I have a lot of respect for that program. I have a lot of um, you know, deep-rooted feelings for that program, and, and I think what Woody uh, did this year is a step in the right direction. I'm very happy with with what's in place there, and and I'm just thrilled to be the, the head coach at Ball State. You know, like I I get an opportunity to lead a program in my own in my own state. I think there's a lot of excitement and momentum within our program right now. We have to capitalize on that. I have to continue to to build a staff. Um, you know take care and wrap my arms around the roster that I currently have as well as we have three open scholarships I have to build this team into a winner and a competitor in the MAC where we can we can take this team to the NCAA tournament and that's that's my focus any call down there to Mike Woodson to see if uh they've got some openings in the non-conference schedule uh he know he's got my number (laughs) he's got my number (laughs) how big is it last one I guess from from me Michael how big of a challenge is it for um, in your position, scheduling a non-conference so often. We heard about with Indiana this year. Well, the non-conference schedule held them back you know, from an NCAA tournament standpoint, but that's largely you know, in their control, whereas I would think for you, at, at times, you're kind of at the mercy of some of these bigger schools if you do indeed want to get them on the schedule. 
Yeah, I, you know, I think other than um, the people involved in your program, so your, you know, your personnel, your, your, you know, your staff, your players. Uh, outside of that, recruiting, um, scheduling is the next most important thing, and so it's uh, it's something that we're going to begin to work on and try to tackle um, as putting together a good schedule, um, one that that. Um, you know, you, you have to be, you want to, it's a kind of a balancing act. You want to put yourself in a situation where you're playing quality opponents that, that your guys are excited about. Um, and, but as you're building this program, um, especially when, when you're in a, uh, a conference like the MAC, where you're largely dependent on winning three games, uh, in Cleveland, uh, you, you don't want your team beat up. Um, as you head into your conference season, because that's where you're 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 chasing the championship and putting yourself in a position to win an NCAA tournament. So uh, we want to make sure we have some quality opponents that our fans are going to be excited about. Um, but we also want to build it where we're we're getting the challenges that we need both at home and on the road that prepare our guys for the slate of the MAC conference and then ultimately trying to win three games in Cleveland. So, uh, it's, it's very difficult. It's not, it's not as easy as picking up the phone and calling Woody and be like, yo, like let's, let's hoop, <laughs> you know, um, it's not quite that easy. There's a lot of different things that go into it. And, um, you know, there, you know, TV gets involved at the high level and, and, uh, the dates and times and, and all the things. So it's, it's really kind of, kind of putting a, a puzzle together but i'm excited to dive in that um and make sure that i, I try to do my best job in putting our kids in a position to be successful as we enter the mac conference play you know it's interesting michael you've been around a lot of great coaches you know i mean yeah, obviously been playing, lucky yeah very playing lucky. for bob knight and, and being with chris holtman and brad stevens and mick cronin who i think is a, a heck of a coach you know from a defensive standpoint in particular when you look right now and maybe maybe you're too new at the head coaching position, obviously, to, to know this. But when you really think philosophically about basketball, mm-hmm. the coach that you have worked or played under that you hear in your head most often is who? Well, I've got a I've got a weird head. I got to tell you, I, I got voices all over the place <laughs> up up there. Uh, I hear a little bit of everybody, and and you know you're exactly right. The guys that I've been around have have you know all. Um, you know, molded me into to who I am today as a as a coach, and so I, I hear a little bit of um, all their voices and, and all the different things that I've learned. So I, I hope that that uh, you know one thing that I think maybe my best quality as a, as a coach I hope is I'm very comfortable uh, in who I am. Uh, I'm not going to try to be Bob Knight. I'm not going to try to be Brad Stevens or Mick Cronin or Chris Holman. Like I'm going to be me. Now I'm going to take the things that I've learned from all those men. Um, and, and use it in my my own way, but I, you know, the thing that that I've picked up with all those guys is I want to develop a team that, like I said, is 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 based on toughness. Um, I want versatility defensively, uh, some length and some athleticism, shooting. Right, obviously, when you can shoot the basketball, it, it makes it makes the game a little bit easier. But the thing that that I've been probably most proud of is throughout my coaching career, I've been on a lot of different teams. And we've we've been able to win 90 to 82, and we've also been able to win 56-52. And I think if you build a team that understands what it takes to win games, um, and you put the right people in place, I think that's that's a real quality of of a, of a really good basketball team is when you can win in a bunch of different ways. Like you don't have to get to 80 every game because you're good enough defensively to win a tight, low possession game. But if somebody wants to get out there and run, you also have that versatility to beat somebody 90 to 82. I think that's a good basketball team when you can win at different styles uh, throughout the season because you're going to face a bunch of different opponents that are going to throw different things at you. Hey, listen, we know how much people, including, and, I think, and, and Bob listen, Knight. Like, hey, trust me, you guys don't want to know some of the things that are going through my head. Like, nobody, <laughs> nobody wants to hear some of that stuff. <laughs> I'm going to get out of this car right now and take a picture in front of that sign. That's right. and, you know. <laughs> hey, when, you know, what's funny is I think Bob Knight would probably say, like, deep down, I think Bob Knight probably loved that moment when you turned around and barked back at Bob Knight, which is like one of the famous clips in Bob Knight's coaching tenure of you walking away and you guys having that exchange. Do you have to scrub the internet now for, off YouTube so that your players don't see that? And they're, hey, wait a minute, Coach is a guy that was wasn't afraid to bark at Coach. <laughs> I, you know, I, the one the one thing I um, I wanted to get across to to them in in our first meeting 
um, I wanted them to try to get a true sense of who I am and 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 what I'm about and why I'm doing this. Um, and so it, it, we had a, we had a really good conversation. Those and I told I told them this. I said, hey, if you got questions, ask me. Let me answer them. Like I, I don't need Google answering questions for you. I don't need people around you answering quick. You got a question about me or or this program or how this is going to look or how it it may end up for you. Like ask me. Like I, I'll tell you, I'm going to shoot you straight between the eyes. Um, I believe in open and honest relationships, and if we have that, we've got a chance to be successful. So I, I want them to come to me and ask those questions. But um, you know, the one thing about all those clips, man, I I forgot I had a good head of lettuce. Now I had <laughs> yeah. some hair. I had some hair. I, and it makes me, I, I want to get back in the gym. If I shed 30 pounds, I might, I might be able to get out on the court again. It was harder Pick, to hear the voices. Court in practice. Yeah, it was harder to hear the voices in your head with all that protection up above it, right? That's right. <laughs> I, I forgot. It, my, my daughter, my, my wife called me and said she, she showed my daughters that stuff. And they, my daughter's like, we've never pulled anything out, you know, and, and, you know, hey, look what, like, I've never been that guy, right? So she said it was, it was kind of funny watching my daughter's reaction to, um, seeing me, you know, be who I was when I was, you know, 21 years like, old. Who is that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah hey, right. My last question for you, Coach. Michael Lewis is our guest, the new head coach at Ball State. One thing that is different between your playing days and today, and that is the transfer portal. I, I mean, yeah. it, it almost feels like this time of year is college basketball free agency each year. How big a wrinkle of challenge does that create for coaches now? Well, I, I think we're still adjusting to it and learning about it. You know, I, I do think um, it's new. I, this is the second year, I think, of it. Um, and so I think you get you get into year four, five, six, seven, things are going to kind of settle down, you know, a little bit. But it's new for everybody, and, and you have to um, – you have to embrace it. You have to understand it. You have to navigate it. Um, I have some guys currently in the portal, and I, I told them, like, that that does not upset me. Like, I understand it. Like, I just went through uh, a coaching change, you know, three years ago at, at UCLA. And, and so I understand um, some of the fe- the feelings that you're going through and the, the, the gamut of emotions that, that you're going through. And it's my job to get in front of you and kind of wrap my arms around you where you, you have a sense of understanding of who I am and that, hey, things are going to be okay. Right there's a reason you're at Ball State. There's a reason you should continue to be at Ball State, and and you have a, a guy in place now that gets it. Um, but you you have to navigate those things um, and understand it. Because I also saw at UCLA that when a group of guys came together, what they could accomplish. Right, we went to a, you know we we competed for a conference championship, Final Four, Sweet Sixteen. So um, you know those guys are just going through some things as everybody's dealing with. Um, but now they, I think they've got a sense of understanding of of um, you know they've they've got a leader in place, a guy that's gonna you know care. Like I told them yesterday, I said, listen, uh, I'm not like a lot of these other guys. Like I don't care that I didn't recruit you. I don't care that you're in the portal. You have Ball State on your chest. You're my guys now, right? You're my responsibility, and, I, and it's it's my job to make sure that you have a, a great college experience, one similar to I, – like I, I know how I feel about mine. I want those guys to feel about their college experience playing here at Ball State the way that I ha- feel about my college experience because these guys get one shot to do it, and we don't need a bunch of adults trying to screw up their experience. So they got a guy in front of them now that is all about them and about their experience – um, and, and I'm going to do everything I can to make help them be successful. Are you the all-time assist leader at Indiana? Did I make that up, or is that accurate? You didn't make it up. I'm not c- currently. I was, Did Yogi passed you? I was, say like, Yogi, I yeah, think, right? Yogi, Yogi passed me, and uh, Yogi was a, was a hell of a lot better player than I was, so uh, I'm cool with that. Like Just the fact that my name is on a list with, um, you know, Yogi and Quinn Buckner and, and all those guys. Like, I mean, Who did you pass? You do you remember? Me? That was Quinn. Okay. Yeah, it was Quinn. Yeah, and, and Quinn was and, hey, Quinn was a hell of a lot better player than me too. So <laughs> I'm kind of the guy that just kind of I'm just stuck in the middle, and I kind of stand out because I'm not like the other two. <laughs> <laughs> and you're bald. Hey, I got yeah. I got fans from schools all around the state uh, messaging me right now. Man, I wish Michael Lewis was leading our program uh, again. The Jasper uh, city of Jasper's been kind to the Bowen family, and I, I think it'll be kind to the Muncie family and the Ball State family as well with this hire. Michael, always enjoy our conversations real down to earth and you see why you have so many qualities that we love about people from this state. So good luck. I know it's a challenge, but uh, you'll have great success and hopefully we can have you on again. Absolutely. Anytime. Let me know when you guys are heading up here.
Love it. Michael Lewis right there on the Pay Less Liquors Hotline. Again, that podcast will be up there get with some, uh, Jacob Tammy as well. Get some Bush Light at he's Pay Less big, Liquors, right? And he's a big, uh, we didn't get to it with him, but he's a big Indy 500 guy, right? Is he? I mean, who isn't, right? Pretty sure, yeah. Big Indy 500 guy. So maybe when we're out there during the month of May, if Michael's out there, we'll have to give him on. And so we uh, cheers to a Bush Light. Should we just hit the weekend? Because I don't think we're going to top today's show. Man, Tammy and Lewis, those are two pretty good ones. Two pretty good ones. So again, the podcast will be up just after the show if you guys missed those conversations. We're giving away a four-pack to the Indy 11 opener on Saturday night coming up on the Pop Quiz in about 10 minutes. But let's hit Big O Tire Sports Center update. This Sports Center update on 93.5 and 107.5 The Fan is presented by Big O Tires, the team you trust. Uh, NBA last night, we'll begin with that, Kevin, because we were talking about the fact that Cleveland is the team that we need to keep an eye on now all of a sudden because you want to make sure that that draft pick that they had sent to Indiana, which is lottery protected, stays in the Pacers' and possession. I got some clarity on that. Okay. okay. So again, lottery protected. I was texting with Tony East a little bit earlier. We had who we have had on covers the Pacers. He said it's a lottery protected pick this year and next year, and then it would turn into two second rounders. So if Cleveland were to miss the playoffs this year and next, it would then turn into two second rounders. Uh, but if they were to miss the playoffs this year, that pick would still be up in the air. Now, does the year. playoff play-in round count as the playoffs? you got to be one of the first eight seeds. Okay. Yeah. Once you get to 9-10, like Indiana last year, you have missed the playoffs, and therefore your pick is going to the Pacers. Well, the good news is Cleveland last night snapped a three-game losing streak. They got the ultimate medicine for any team sliding. They defeated Orlando 107-101. Darius Garland, 25 points, 12 assists. For the Magic, who themselves have lost three state uh, straight Pacers last night. Losers to Atlanta at Gamebridge Fieldhouse, 132-123. Boyan Bogdanovich had 29 for Atlanta. Pacers were led by Tyrese Halliburton, who had 25 and 13. Buddy Hill had 26 for Indiana. Now 25 and 51 on the year. Six to go. Denver on Wednesday. The Celtics in Boston Friday. The Celtic or excuse me, the Pistons on Sunday. Just two weeks left in the regular season. Um, Purdue basketball news from yesterday. Isaiah Thompson, the Zionsville product, he is transferring, or is in the transfer portal, I should say, started 20 games. Could you see Isaiah Thompson in a Ball State uniform next yeah, year? Yeah, I could see that. Uh, that would be actually probably a pretty nice fit, right? Would make some sense. Uh, Purdue, I think the transfer portal would be wise to explore for a point guard. I know Braden Smith coming in from Westfield, but still definitely an avenue that they need to explore. Outside of Thompson, though, I don't think there's a lot of obvious subtractions or guys that would be unhappy. You think a guy like Brandon Newman would kind of blossom into more playing time with Jaden Ivey leaving. Um, they had a couple red shirts well, you, you that, would think would play. Uh, well. Sasha Stefanovic is not coming back next year either. I think you know him, Trayvon Williams, Eric Hunter, Jake, if I'm not mistaken, they met with Matt Painter at the start of the year and were like, all right, you know, I think Painter said to them, guys, I kind of need to know, you know, I want to have some integrity with these scholarships. Right. Uh, because I think you're seeing it a lot right now, Jake. You're probably seeing a lot of college teams that are withholding scholarships to kind of high school recruits. Yeah. You know, if you're a high school and you blossomed in your senior year, uh, college teams are going to you know sift through the transfer portal before they necessarily give that to a high school age kid. Uh, women's Final Four is set. South Carolina and Louisville on one side of the bracket. Stanford and UConn on the other. That is from Minneapolis. Hey, that UConn-NC State game last night was spectacular. Spectacular. And both those teams, of course, sent home the two Indiana teams. Uh, Notre Dame and uh, IU bowing out in the Sweet 16. Boy, you feel for Neal Ivey, the mother of Jaden Ivey, watching her son lose in a surprise upset on Friday. And then on Saturday, Notre Dame blew a 10-point lead in the Sweet 16 to NC State in that one. The men's Final Four this weekend, Villanova and Kansas, 6.09. And then Saturday, it's Duke and Carolina, 8.49. We've got six titles for Carolina, five for Duke, Villanova and Kansas, three each. If you look at the all-time winningest programs in college basketball, first in Kansas, third in North Carolina, fourth in Duke and Villanova, 19th. I'm looking at the pop quiz here, very NCAA heavy. Okay. Men's, Very and, men's and women's? Uh, a little bit of women thrown in there as well. Now, we got to be easy on the hints today. We already had a five for five, and it was Monday. Boy, on a Monday. Well, you, <laughs> hey, what? Mark, don't look at me. What are they l- taking l- the l- Jiffy Lube out of our check? Look at him. The integrity of the pop quiz has waned, which, <laughs> given, you know, 
where okay, Jake no. is educationally right now. Should we be too shocked by that? <laughs> no. <laughs> but it, by the way, is it? I've How are a, things going? We're halfway through the semester, right? You know what? I uh, thank you for asking. I'm, I'm the the British Hall of Films. The guy keeps giving me. I got an 88 on the first project, and he's given me 90s since. But I'm still under the 90 average, so I have a B plus in that. I've got an. I've secured an A in musical theory. I have currently a, an ongoing A in my public relations and media relations class. So I'm looking for the 4.0. But the British Hall of Films, it, it's. It's because you keep doing that impression. He's like, I'm not giving that yes, guy an A. Exactly. Now, did your classmates not invite you to South Padre for spring break? or what? <laughs> did, did, they did actually have did, a spring break, yes. Did Shannon not give you the go-ahead on <laughs> they, that, or what they, What happened? They, I'm telling you what. Like, I brought the funnel to the airport and everything. I'm like, all right, let's go. <laughs> yeah. Like, this guy just wants to hang out at Bucky's all day. <laughs> <laughs> we want to go to spring break. That's right. Everybody else went to Padre. I'm like, I'll just be here at Bucky's eating Bucky nuggets. I'm not sure but, if it was officially announced yesterday, but I think I saw that the USA swimming trials are coming to Lucas Oil in really? 2024. Um, I know it's maybe not the most like relevant, prevalent topic, but Jake, that's a big deal. Um, yeah, to get the swimming trial, that is like a huge, huge event. Not the natatorium. Oh, I think you want like a bigger venue. I mean, I get it. Yeah, I mean that's like televised, you know, big time, and and certainly a huge thing that leads into the twenty four Olympics, which are. Paris? I love this St. Peter's shirt, by the way. I, I thought it fit you. There are a I'm, couple ones that I could have picked from, but, I, well, but I'm a little I, concerned because I'm gaining weight. I can't. I mean, it's tough. Well, you're me. going double T-shirt, and your uh, mole is intruding probably as well. True. The All right. strut of destiny is beautiful. Pop quiz time. We'll try to keep as much of a muzzle as we can on Jake, but you know how that goes. Uh, we'll do that next here. Again, Indy 11, four-pack tickets given away to Saturday night's opener. Give us a call, 317-239-1070. If you love listening to our shows, then you've got to follow us on our social media. You can find us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Search 107.5 The Fan and share your opinions with us on our posts. Mucinex extended release by layer tablets allow for immediate and extended release, thinning and loosening mucus, and relieving chest congestion for 12 hours. Look for Mucinex available at Target. You know, for those returning from spring break, they're going to be thinking about, oh boy, I need to save some money after the week. I just have. Well, you can offset some high prices with Golden Oaks Low 3.25% rate. But you got to hurry. It's not going to stay like this forever. The Fed has raised rates, but Goldman Glidding still has millions of dollars available at near record low rates. Home financing has language all its own. But Golden Oak Lending speaks mortgage and loves to translate it for customers. You can get started with Zipline, which is Golden Oaks' fast and easy online mortgage tool. Average cash out customer saves nine hundred and four dollars a month, and getting started couldn't be easier with Golden Oaks free mortgage checkup. It's risk free. There's no paperwork or credit card required. So just call three one seven seven zero six gold to find out how much money you could save each month. Again, that's three one seven seven zero six gold, or head to goldenoaklending.com right now to see what your home equity can do for you. NMLS one one four nine three seven three point two five percent fixed four point three six one percent APR. FHA, 15-year mortgage with 20% equity and approved credit. Stop by one of your locally owned and operated Big O Tire stores in Mooresville, Plainfield, Lebanon, Brownsburg, Whitestown, and Indy at 86 and Zionsville Road now through April the 3rd and get up to $190 in savings plus free basic installation on sets of four select in-stock Bridgestone or Firestone tires. Big O has the lowest price on every tire every day with no credit needed financing for every situation. Big O is more than just tires too. Come in for brakes, alignments, oil changes, fluids, batteries, and more. Schedule your appointment at BigOtires.com. That's Big O Tires, the team you trust. Diamonds are April's birthstone, but any time is a good time for diamonds. And when you give the gift of diamonds, it's truly a thrill. Visit Shane Company for stunning gifts. Find jewelry that's so exquisite and beautiful, it'll take her breath away. We've designed gorgeous styles in every price range, including diamond earrings, necklaces, rings, and bracelets. Our diamonds are natural, and since no two are alike, your piece will be one of a kind, a symbol as unique as she is. Shane Company jewelry is crafted to the highest standards, set with diamonds we hand-select for beauty and hand-match for consistency. In fact, we make our jewelry with such care, we're able to offer a free lifetime warranty. Come in and chat with our friendly and knowledgeable team of non-commissioned jewelry consultants. We'll make it fun to find a diamond gift, something solely for her enjoyment that will last forever. Now you have a friend in the jewelry business, Shane Company and ShaneCo.com. 
The Ride, the Ride with JMV. New Colts quarterback Matt Ryan joins us. Your contract is for two years. Are you for sure in and you feel as if you can give this team two years, if not more? I say if not more. I feel like I'm in a great spot coming in fresh and ready to go, but I want to play until I'm 40 or past. I'm not great at math, but it's more than two years. And so, you know, hopefully uh, we can be productive. It can be a, a really fun run. The Ride with JMV. Weekdays, 3 to 6. On 93.5 and 107.5. The Fan. Have you studied? Can you handle the pressure? Sharpen your pencils. It's time for the Pop Quiz with Kevin and Query. Brought to you by Jiffy Lube, Indiana's favorite oil change since 1985. It is indeed Pop Quiz time. Again, we're giving away Indy 11 tickets. It's Saturday, April 2nd, 7 p.m. versus the LA Galaxy 2. Um, It's a first chance the fans are root on the boys in blue under new head coach Mark Lauer. We had him on when he got hired back, I think, uh, late in the fall there. And it's a blue-out blowout as the team will unveil their new look blue-on-blue checkered home jerseys. I believe they call those kits, right? That is correct. And fans are encouraged See how the new kits look on the pitch. Pack the mic in their best blue gear. I have enough. not been to an Indy 11 game. I had season tickets the first year they were here. Really? Yep. And that was, was that over at Carroll? It was. I enjoyed it. It just, a lot of their matches, a lot of their games uh, conflicted with the IndyCar schedule, so I didn't get to go as much. I gave out a lot of tickets, but it was fun. Where are we it. at with like stadium talks? Has that ever evolved? I, I don't believe so. Just old Carroll? I think so. I think I liked it. I thought it was a good venue. Uh, all right, number one through eight, Jake. Uh, I will go with number six. Six. Steve. Good Steve. morning, Steve. Good morning, Kevin. How we doing? Oh, Steve's smart. I, I, Steve. Steve's gonna. He won't need Steve any hints. Nail this. Yeah, yeah, he won't need any hints. Steve's all over uh, this. Uh, Jake. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm on I-69. I'm still waiting for the Quarry Gas and Go. <laughs> That's the Quarry Gas and Gulp. We are going to sell dip combos, fountain drinks, and 28 bathrooms, the cleanest in the area. I'm looking forward to someday. My million-dollar fortune. Do it again. Did you say dip combos? Dip, comma, combos, comma, fountain drinks. So basically, you come in the Quarry Gas and Gold, it's only to use the restroom, buy dip, combos, or a fountain drink. That's it. I do love combos. I thought you were going to say dip. Well, I I, no. (laughs) I, I could probably get behind that. Combos is the best road food ever. About Gardettos, up there, good. But what are you charging price. for fountain drinks? Seventy nine cents. Any size? Yep. Okay. Nope. You got my business. <laughs> no Bucky Nuggets on the way out. Nope, just combos. But they're getting seven bucks. Okay, uh, Steve. Here we go. Seven. <laughs> Question Holy number hell. one. Steve, last night UConn reached oh, the women's oh, final Lewis four. Michael Lewis isn't <laughs> stopping there for that. It's the fourteenth straight time that the Huskies have made the final four in women's basketball. That's a D one record. Who holds the record on the men's side of things for consecutive final fours reached? Is it Duke, UCLA, North Carolina, or Kentucky? Uh, that would be UCLA. Okay. All right, number two, happy 46th anniversary to the Indiana Hoosiers, who completed their perfect season by defeating Michigan 86-68 in the finals of the 1976 NCAA tournament on this day. The leading score in that NCAA championship game was who? Quinn Buckner. Do you want to hear the guesses? Yes, I'd like to hear the guesses. The options, you mean. Should we go to the next he's, one there? I mean, that his... was that was a little dicey there. Scott May, Kent Benson, Ricky Green, or Phil Hubbard? Oh, Scott May. Boy, Steve, a little bit ahead of himself right. there. Uh, name the last team to enter the championship game of the NCAA men's tournament undefeated. Was it the Sycamores of Indiana State, UNLV? Gonzaga. Gonzaga, okay. Scotty getting a little nervous there. The three winningest head coaches in the history of the men's and women's Division I basketball history have reached their respective Final Fours this season. Name all three. Uh, Gino Ariama, Mike Krzyzewski, and what was the third portion? I just need one more name. The 
three yeah, winningest Baltimore. head coaches in the history of the men's and women's Division One basketball history have reached their respective Final Fours this season. You've got two. I need a third. I'm um, uh... Jake behaving very well. <laughs> Reminds me of Rosie at times. Not as often as I would like. Nope, I don't have a third one for you. Jake would say the state bird. Would that be a hint? I would say the initials are the same. You're not listening on radio, but watching on what? That's the initials. Oh, that's not one of your better clues. But, yeah, that is a strong clue. Uh, You want to give him number five? Question number five for you, Steve. The Phoenix Suns will finish the regular season with the best record in the NBA. They are currently 61-14. and Monty Williams is just the second coach in Suns history to lead the franchise to a 60-win season. Who was the other one? Was it John McLeod? Paul Westfall. Okay, that was option C, Paul Westfall. Okay. All right. Steve, he likes to get straight to the point yeah, there. Steve he doesn't, doesn't mess around. Yeah, he does Military want, guy. He doesn't mess around. Mess around. He just wants his dip and combos and wants to be on his way. <laughs> Back on the highway we go. UConn, they're the women's final four for, Loud the, four, and proud. for the 14th straight year, extending its D1 record. Uh, Jake, which school holds the men's record for most consecutive final four? It is, in fact, UCLA. Let's go! Nine uh, straight there. Scott May, 26 points. Just one more than Kent Benson. Would you have gotten that right? That is yes. correct. By the way, uh, this worked out well for Steve because UCLA's streak ended in 75. Indiana then was 76. And it was Steve's Marquette Warriors that were then in 1977, the national champions. Uh, the last undefeated team to enter the final four, or the championship game, rather, Gonzaga, who lost to Baylor 86-70 last year in the title game. All right, the three winningest head coaches in the history of the men's and women's game have reached their respective Final Fours this season. Yes, Coach K. Yes, Gino Oriema. By the way, really cool Gino interview after the game last night. His emotion, I thought, was pretty cool there. And the third one, I was going to say, there is an Indiana connection here, if I'm not mistaken. We could have gone that route as well. I tried to go with the State Bird, the Cardinal. Tara Vanderveer. <laughs> 1,157. Mike D'Antoni was the answer in Phoenix. You don't get to come back tomorrow. You don't even get a lousy copy of our home game. You're a complete loser. <laughs> well, it was uh, it was fun while it lasted. That all seems harsh. Well, that probably could be said for the Pacers season at what? About Thanksgiving this year? They're like outright tanking now, Jake. Like, Malcolm Brogdon is not playing because of rest. Miles Turner? But at least they, like, fake an injury with Turner. Or they're like, oh, he's got a foot, got a stress fracture. I mean, Brogdon's literally like, yeah, not playing due to rest. <laughs> What's he resting for? I'm not doing the show tomorrow because of rest, <laughs> exactly. Kevin. Gosh. Boy, that thought has crossed my mind a time or two. <laughs> well, thanks. All right, one final time here on Kevin and Corey. How much money St. Peter's make for the Sweet 16 run? We'll hit you with that. We come back here. 93.5175, the fan. The Fed has raised rates. But there's still time to lock in Golden Oak Lending's low 3.25% rate. I'm James Hawkins, president of Golden Oak. With home values at all-time highs and our low rates, you can pull more cash out of your home. Call 317-706-GOLD today. Golden Oak Lending, cured my blues. NMLS 114937, 3.25% fixed, 4.361% APR. FHA 15-year mortgage with 20% equity and approved credit. Every dribble, every pass, and every bucket, all in the palm of your hand. Because now you can sign up and bet. No strings attached with Bet River Sportsbook app featuring award winning customer service. Live in game bets, player props, and instant betting. Bucket to bucket. Don't miss out on all the big games. Get in the action with Bet River Sportsbook app. Must be 21. Must be located in Indiana. Gambling problem? Call 1 800 9 with it. 1 800 994 8448. It takes courage to talk with that someone special when there are problems in the bedroom. Erectile dysfunction, or PE, can shatter your confidence and make your relationship challenging. You can put an end to these issues. Have the courage to make just one confidential visit to the Indianapolis Men's Clinic and get that spark back in your relationship. The doctors at the Indianapolis Men's Clinic offer the latest solutions for all ED and PE issues, and you'll see results in your first visit. 
or there's no charge. Call 999-9000 to meet with their licensed providers, no matter your age or your conditions. Diabetes, high blood pressure, prostate cancer, low testosterone causing your issue. It doesn't matter. They can help. Call the Indianapolis Men's Clinic at 999-9000. That's 999-9000 or online at IndyMensClinic.com. Have the courage to take that first step. Indianapolis Men's Clinic, your key to a better life. At Gamebridge Fieldhouse, we protect home court. That's blocked again by Turner. Back. Washington drives, scores in a foul. We dig deep. Nice pass, Brissett finishes. For tip off through the final buzzer. It's game time at the Fieldhouse. It's one of your last chances to cheer on the blue and gold when the Denver Nuggets come to town. Catch the Pacers and Nuggets Wednesday at 7. Get your tickets at Pacers.com. That's Pacers.com. Pacers Nuggets Wednesday at 7. Finding the right person for the job isn't easy. Just ask someone who hired a lounge singer to be their office receptionist. Hello, this is Mickey Marquis, and you've reached the office of Doug and Associates. <laughs> Thank you very much. Catch me Tuesday nights at the Hotel Johnson. Hello? But if you've got an insurance question, you can always count on your local GEICO agent. They can bundle your policies, which could save you hundreds. Doug and Associates, this is Mickey Market. Hello? For expert help with all your insurance needs, visit geico.com slash local today. And now it's GEICO's Motorcycle Rules of the Road. Avoid biking in the rain and never touch another person's bike. Hey, guys, look at these bikes. So shiny. Uh, whoops. I'm going to leave a note. Oh, gosh, there's more. And the rule to saving on motorcycle insurance is, in 15 minutes, GEICO could save you 15% or more. The Pacers welcome the Denver Nuggets to the Fieldhouse. Tomorrow evening at 6.30 on 93.5 and 107.5 The Fan. Kevin and Query on 93.5 at 107.5. The Fan. If you missed it earlier, we had uh, Michael Lewis, Ball State head coach, and Jacob Tammy on, and Mark will have that up on the podcast. I thought the Tammy interview was great. I thought he was, shared some terrific insight on his years with Matt Ryan. Of course, told some Peyton stories as well, and enjoyed catching up with the former Colts tight end. Third round pick? Does that sound right? Fourth. fourth. Fourth rounder? Yep. Out of Kentucky? That's correct. And then they had, um, was he... Is Hal Mummy his coach? Did he, that might be right actually. Did he coincide with Joe Dean Davenport? Oh, I forgot about him. Joe Dean was before, I think. Joe Dean a little older? No. Did Tammy replace Joe Dean Davenport? Did you need to replace Joe Dean Davenport? <laughs> <laughs> We've got a need! I'm just telling you. I think the need to replace Jack Doyle probably a little bit more pressing than Jody and Davenport. Boy, you're not kidding there. I, I need a tight end. Still up in the air in my eyes. Still oh, yeah. up in the air for sure. And we talked about receiver earlier. That'll be up on the podcast. Um, Kamoko Ture, Jake, is uh, visiting the Atlanta Falcons. You know, he's one of those I could see potentially going somewhere else. And if healthy, which. And. You know, and being productive, right? You had five and a half sacks last year. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I could see him one year prove it deal somewhere else. They're a little bit more committed to him playing time wise. Eight sacks, something like that. I mean, he he's he was your most individually talented edge rusher for right. probably the past like three or four years. He would Speed be guy. I, I still think he can be an important piece here. Well, I think if you're in his camp, do you want to be here? Right. Well, that's I mean, clearly they are Yannick Quitty. Ngakwe and Quiddy Pay aren't coming off the field right. very often. And you think Tyquan Lewis would factor in as well. Okay, so St. Peter's, Jake, uh, based off all the money, revenue stream from the tournament, everything that the NCAA brings in, I would say mostly So are we talking me. about their share, or are we talking about what one of these like marketing companies estimates all told the value? No, is? I think this is their their share. Um, I don't think it's the exact number right now, but I think this is a pretty ac- – I think it's based off maybe last year's revenue for the tournament. you think this year would be a little bit greater. Uh, 350000 per win. Okay. That goes to their conference, though. Okay, so – so each win counts as a unit, 
And with three of those, 350000 is So $1.1 million, right? $1.1 million there. And then that is paid out annually for six straight years. So they've brought in over nearly $7 million to the MAC. Don't you feel like they should get more of but a that's share? split evenly among all schools, right? I think some conferences do that. I think it's up to the conference so like how they want to handle sitting that. Back, like bring in the money, right? Sienna, you know, they're yeah. like, yeah, baby. Um, it's interesting because I guess I never thought about it like this. But if you are one of these really low conferences, mid major conferences is probably more of the politically correct term. Some of them want to get sent to the playing game because that counts as a unit if you win that game. Yeah. So Wright State just brought in a unit for the Horizon League by winning the playing game. And that that's fascinating. Yeah. So, so Indiana worth, Indiana did its job for the Big Ten. Yeah. Think about, boy, think about what Gonzaga's doing for the West Coast oh Conference gosh, last year, right? Great point, yeah. And St. Mary's then or wins a the game Gonzaga's this year. what Gonzaga's done for the last, you know, right. decade. I mean, if you are, I don't even know who else is in the West Coast Conference. Loyola Marymount. Yeah, I mean, Portland. if you're sitting back, Portland, you're sitting back like, hey, go Zags, right? Yeah. So St. Mary's and Gonzaga this year won three games for the league. But, man, Gonzaga last year, I mean, that's going to pay for a while, right? Exactly. Uh, NFL Draft announced Kansas City, Detroit the next two years for the draft. Don't get me started on this. Yeah, you have ranted about this. How many people were in Nashville for it? It's the biggest joke ever. You, when think, they, you think Indy will bid if and when the combine leaves here? Yeah, probably because the NFL will want to make money on anything. I just I cannot imagine. I think going to the draft would be incredibly boring. I, that's I cannot imagine that people like are gonna go, like yeah I'm gonna go put on my Eagles jersey and go just stand outside so I can and, you know in the fifth round I really hope they take the left tackle out of Texas A and M in round five. Come on, put back your Athlon Sports magazine you flipped through at Kroger yesterday and quit sounding like Mel Kiper. God, I used to love that. I'd go to Osco with my mom after school so my mom taught at the elementary school that i went to and uh we'd go to osco and i'd go to the magazine aisle and literally flip through the athlon sports and she'd shop and then yeah. you know 25 30 minutes later time to go i mean I, maybe get a reese's egg on the way out what was your mom Easter shopping season. for at osco drugs well it's it's kind I mean, of like cvs yeah, yeah i mean like i get CBS. it but like you're not doing your weekly grocery shopping there. like what kind of money were your folks pulling <laughs> yeah, very personal. We're going to buy a seven dollar loaf of wheat bread. You're acting like Osco is some high end. It's not high end, but it's not where you do your weekly grocery shopping. It's well, like the it's like the grocery store where I ran into you. Like it's cool to get like a can of soup there. Yeah, I guess it was more. But of like a you go to house good stuff, right. you know, paper towels, <laughs> I mean, you know, cleaning supplies. But point taken. I listen when it came to the NFL draft, and I only have a you you pulled this perfectly because I can't get on my my usual twenty minute soapbox. The whole thing of Nashville, when they tried to say that there were, didn't they say a million people over three days? Yeah, they got through it. And I'm like, first off, there's no way that that's possible. But secondly, when they showed, like, you know, the the streets, and they're like, see, there's 300,000 people. And I'm like, well, let's think about this. 30,000 people run the mini marathon every year. And it takes three hours for all of them to pass by any area where you're watching it. 30,000 people. If you go to the Indianapolis 500-mile race, at maximum, the most that ever have been in the in the permanent seating, 275,000 people. And what we know is that 275,000 people sitting 30 high wraps around for two and a half miles. But yet, the city of Nashville managed to get in four square blocks 300,000 people to watch the NFL draft. Zero chance that's true. Are you saying that's fake news? Zero chance that's true. You know what I am um, have my eyes locked to right now? I'm like one of these crazy college football fans on a message board. What do you think I'm doing? You're like a crazy college football fan on a message board? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're locked in on the YouTube discussion right now on our page no 
Avoid no. that today. <laughs> no, I am not. <laughs> yeah, yep, keeping my distance from that. Uh, I am currently uh, looking at a flight tracker to see if Tiger Woods' private plane is indeed on the way to Augusta National. There are therapy groups for that, right? <laughs> we got the Masters next week. Tiger, car accident, a little bit over a year ago. We've not seen him compete in a walking golf tournament. He did compete with his son in a father-son event in a cart. Walking, totally different animal. And there are some reports that Tiger's going to try and give it a go next week, which makes me extremely giddy. Okay. Uh, you and I are totally different in that regard. Will you watch one yin hole on of the Masters? No. Go playing golf and you're going to like it. <laughs> I mean, the last, on the last day, the last, you know, I like Did seeing Tiger the Did Tiger ever move the needle for you? Never. Could not care less about Tiger Woods. Mark, your golf view. Probably not the right thing week. to say as a radio host, but just being honest with you. Yeah, that, I mean, trust me, I, I, I get golf can be... Pretty unique for people. I'll be watching. I will probably have some financial uh, incentives thrown in there. But yes, especially if Tiger Woods comes, those ratings will be through the roof, especially after what he went through in the accident. Right. So basically what they're getting at is it's... My Augusta thing, National is a very listen, hilly golf course. Listen, difficult Tiger to Tiger Woods that. is a wonderful talent. I totally get it. And I know that... He, well, I mean, I get it. I totally get it. That said, I... I get tired of stories, of comeback stories, where the downfall of somebody was 100% self-inflicted. Oh, trust me, Tiger, Tiger from a moral standpoint and off the course, <laughs> yeah. I won't be sharing a lot of those stories with, with Rosie, but as an athlete that has transcended their sport, frankly, I don't think anyone did it at a higher level than him. Uh, Muhammad Ali, maybe, but yes. Muhammad Ali, Jackie it. Robinson. I mean, obviously you can find right. some, no, I get but it. compared to what golf usually looks like. No, you're right. No question. So we'll see. Tiger Watch, that's me right now. Flight tracker. You know, that's <laughs> what the college saying? That, What's it saying? That's what the college message boards do with, you know, their their coaching hires. Um, it is saying that a plane is en route, private plane from the airport he usually takes off from to towards Augusta. And a lot of people think that that is his. <laughs> that's me right now. <laughs> Okay. I should probably watch myself after how I ended <laughs> Friday's show. <laughs> Please do. Jacob Tammy and, and Michael uh, Lewis. It's been a rough week for you. Two great interviews. I had to sleep that, that <laughs> off over the weekend. Oh, boy. Uh, tomorrow we'll take a closer look at the final four and where things are at with those blue bloods as well. Jake, congrats to your Peacocks. We officially have retired the sound. The shirt's Thanks awesome. Thank late. you. Uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow. School is in.